Welcome back to another episode of Once Upon a Witchlight. We would really appreciate it if you would like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check that bell so you never miss an episode. And of course, while you're doing that, I would be honored to read some comments. We've got some extra one from ep episode 41 of Once Upon a Witchlight. It was a pretty heavy episode, so we've got some good comments, a couple extra comments. Quote number one, every episode I worry more that gas leaks are a weekly thing. <laughs> it's our weekly gas? Yeah. <laughs> Number two, this is one of the best episodes of Witchlight, period. The emotions and lore repercussions of this episode make me more excited for what is coming next. Number three, Andy smacking and shaking Mikey while laughing is my favorite thing ever. <laughs> First, Richie during the Yuletide one shot, now Mikey. It's been happening far longer yeah. than the Yuletide yeah. one shot. Yeah. Scars just yeah. <laughs> many years you has Andy beaten us. Did you go to the fair with him? <laughs> Number four. He, he did it once to me in Prime and I broke my glove. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I don't know why I was trying. still broken. I'm like Gideon. Uh, number four, Nikki is such a great DM. Her patience is admirable. Her bits of chaos she throws in are entertaining and she has a knack for it. I love watching y'all's campaigns. Thank you. Thank number five, you. being mooned by Torbeck would be the equivalent of witnessing an ancient Eldritch horror. <laughs> True. Number six, Ooh. I'm gonna start calling the feeling of goofy stories getting devastatingly sad suddenly getting witch light 41. <laughs> <laughs> that also sounds like a really pretentious cocktail. It like is. A, a, yeah, a, it a is. club or the witch light 41. Yeah, the witch light I'm gonna 41. start ordering that and bartenders yeah. are gonna be like, I don't know what, what the fuck, fuck that is. Oh, you, you know? know? You know. You know. You know. And lastly, number seven, oh. I really love Gideon and Twig's relationship. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so leave a comment, and maybe oh. next week oh. your comment can be included as well. Right. And while you're so doing that, make sure you check out our Patreon and our merch shop. Thank you and good night. Roll that beautiful bean footage. <gasps> Once upon a witch light hour, the sleeping queen stirred in her tower and through grand halls past lock and key came to her slumber dreams of three. The first brought laughter filled with fright, the second love defiled by spite, the third a world of pure delight. She welcomed these, they were her own, but soon from porcelain lips a groan, her silvery dreamscape now forsaken, to pain from which she'd not awaken, something blighted had come hither, Foul as nightshade creeping thither, From yon the grave-like curse did wither. The little prince wept in his spire, His wounded heart had one desire, A ballad from the dreaming queen, Could turn his maelstrom mind serene. He vowed her rescue, speech sincere, But toys would be his shield and spear, And so he scoured for one full year. In springtime wreathed in parenthood, The prince first found a toy of wood, a doll set, beasts and wild things, but listen close and each one sings. A song of child, owl, and bear, a song that calls the spirits there, a song for monsters with much hair. When summer heat steamed like a kettle, the prince then found a toy of metal, a rocking horse with ashen mane, around its neck was draped a chain. Its horn and eyes and nose shoot flame With mighty hooves and sturdy frame No better steed one could proclaim He searched from autumn's harvest throne The prince then found a toy of bone Lettered blocks stacked to the sky When turned to words could only lie Deceit known to the hounds of hell Makes for a potent hex or spell Of souls, of sin, of shadow fell through winter's chill from peak to pass, the prince then found a toy of glass. Marble spun in measured motion, like careful thought or certain notion. Each glinting cat's eye seeing all, from stars beyond the cosmic sprawl, to inner strength and mind's recall. When season stopped, the final day, at last the prince found halves of clay. He shed a tear. This would not do. His favorite toy was split in two. It stank and had a horrid face, but in his heart held special place. Through toil this crack he would erase. The day has come, no time for rest. The fateful toy is placed in a chest with stripes of white and stripes of red, just like a big top by his bed. The little prince prepares a flower 
for either outcome, sweet or sour, and makes a wish for love, for power, once upon a witch light hour. You exist in shadows. The dark and creaky attic spreads out before you, cluttered and stretched to, ac to accommodate years of refuse. Light pierces through the gloom and dust. Light pierces through the gloom and dust from a lone and broken window on the north wall, and yet you are shrouded in darkness. The shadow you had fought moments ago leaves no trace that had ever been here at all, but the blood already beginning to clot on the surface of your wounds claims otherwise. Yet none of you feels the sting of physical pain. Laying in stillness, the tiny smile still etched on her frozen lips is the body of a brownie, a sister, a friend. Twig rests at the feet of those she loves, and the silence is louder than the collective crack of your many broken hearts. And so you feel no physical pain as the grief numbs you. Her fist clenched as if in silent determination a simple sign that she faced death as she faced life. The light attempts to pierce the darkness of the gloom, but drowned in the shadows of grief, none of you can see it. mean we need to leave, man. Where, where are we supposed to go now? What are we supposed to do? Got what we came here for. You got it right, kid? Still got your hand on it? This stupid piece of silver spool? Exactly right. That's it. <coughs> we, what, what the hell is this supposed to mean? What, what even is this? <coughs> Who even cares, man? And I'll toss it to Torbeck. <coughs> uh, uh, Torbeck's got it. Uh, I'll reach out, my finger will snap. <laughs> Look at him. Look at all of those. You want to end up black like twig? And we're just supposed to let her get away with it? She killed our friend, man. We just told her we wouldn't leave her in the Feywild. She wanted to come with us. We're just supposed to walk out of here? I actually think we should run. I'm not joking. I look at the state of Grico. Look how close to death Torbeck is. <gasps> Whatever that shadow creature was after, I think it satisfies what we were looking for on behalf of the king. If we can get Twig out, there may be a chance. But if we stay here, we're likely to make some foolish decisions. What would you rather do, kid? I'd rather fucking rip her in half. We don't know how strong he is. She is. And once she casts a hex on you, freezes you in place, and rips all of our intestines out, does a little dance with it, and snaps an X, what then? Uh, Gideon, Dorbeck is sorry he's not better at fighting. Out of juice. I got nothing left. Kitty, you know how much I want to kill the hag, but Kirby's right. I say we take Frosty's pad, go back to Bloody Toes, give those little Fuckers to her. Get Hootsie and fly off the balcony. We get, and I'll point to uh, the deer skull. We get Clavaclaw. His head back. Now we just get the fuck out of here. Are we sure this is all we need? I have no fucking idea. No. We probably can't come back if we're wrong. It's a metaphor, right? He just said a trinket. 
made in the present. The present is thread that's uncut. Represents the present, right? Frosty. I'm sorry. You're smart, doesn't that? Does that you? Did that track? I uh. Silver Fred. Mm-hmm. I mean, Fred's a time. It's like a Sam, right? I'm trying to think about the steps we need to take in order to get out of here. When in some ways we are trapped. I don't know if this pad can carry all of us. And if we can't go down the side of the house out the window, we're gonna have to go through the same room in which we were shrunk, in which Bavlorna and her guest are. Yeah, I'm not sure what we do now. Do we even worry about clap the claw? Do we even worry about fucking bloody toes and these little fuckers? Hoochies with bloody toes. We need to go back and get her. Oh, fuck. I'm just glad she wasn't here. <clears throat> Can we bring her with us? Twig? Yes. We're not fucking leaving her here. We gotta bring her with us. We gotta get her someplace nice, man. You see what the fuck she does to anything that's dead in this place? Stuffs it and puts it on a mantle, puts it behind a piece of glass. It's not fucking happening to Twigsy. You're right. I just. It doesn't feel right like putting it in a bag or something, but. We gotta get the fuck out of here. Although, I'll pick up my hat. Sort of seeing maybe where she was like trying to like scratch at it as she was dying, trying to get my hat back. I'll sort of brush it off. She did this all for us. She was just trying to help. She was just trying to get my hat back. It's all fucked up, don't you think? All she ever wanted was to be a part of the team, man, but she was. She didn't have to do all this. She didn't have to prove anything. Do you have any kind of way to bring it back? Do the primal spirits do anything? No. There's a natural cycle of life and death and rebirth, but not just, oh, never mind. No, thank you. Rebirth in terms of the natural world. If there's any place where there's a chance that that might be possible. It's here in this place. I don't mean in this hut. I mean right now. Right here, right now. If there's any chance of anything bringing it back, it's gonna be that. I'll point at the mechanisms on Torbeck's back. No, 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 there's no way. Where well, it's too dangerous! We don't even know what it is! I saw your fingers turn into some sort of fucking twisted syringes, Torbeck. You're gaining some kind of control. Well, Torbeck doesn't know how to use it! Well, now it's something to try, man. I mean, nobody's done more drugs than Twig. She's licking frogs and drinking mushroom liquor like, like it's going out of style. Uh, something could go horribly wrong. Something's already horribly fucking wrong, man. She's on the ground dead. But is it, is it worth if she comes back different? That's the risk that you're taking if you want to do that, Grammy. I mean, Torbeck seems not that different. Do you die, Torbeck? Under the knife? Torbeck uh, uh, isn't sure. Would Torbeck be here if Torbeck had died? Torbeck may not be different, but his other is very different. I'm just saying. 
is a chance and we want to fucking take it. Five needles in the heart of that shit. I wouldn't be surprised if we fought it right back. We don't know that it's going to work out, man, but we don't know that it's not going to work out. So we're just going to not try? I, I don't know if I'm in for trying, but I don't think we try here. The, the creature downstairs, the guest, she knows that we've killed her shadow. I'm sure of that. We have very limited time to make a decision here. I don't know how long how time factors in any of this after death and all. There's there's no way that pumping twig full of this horrible serum is going to do any good. It was created by a horrible, uh, evil nobility torturing Tolbeck. He can't even control it. And it turns him into a monster. No offense, Tolbeck. I'm undaken. Gregor's right! It's not natural, like Gregor was saying! What, what if to help her, she has to stay uncorrupted? I mean, that's a fair point. <clears throat> well, I don't fucking know, guys, but what, what, what are we just doing? Nothing? We just getting out of here? We just sling her dead body over our shoulders and walk out the fucking steps without trying anything at all? Because maybe it won't work out? I think we've done enough here. It's over here in Hiver. For Hiver. We need to go to the. the, the, the. We you, do. You, you picked the wrong accent for this game, man. Oh, no. <laughs> I. Oh, <no. laughs> Mum, mum couldn't afford speech therapy, and so Uncle Globo <laughs> did, and he was worse than me. But the point is, is what you said, Gideon. That's yes. There's nothing else left to do. If you have my vote, we go to the window where you saved the the little cute little plant sunflower folks, and did no harm and only did good. And then we all get on Frosty's lily pad if it can fit us, or at least one at a time. We go round to the balcony where that Seder was. We go give these little fucks to Bloody Toes in exchange for a way to get to use the mirrors to get to. Uh, uh, mm. That's not bad. And we just. One wrong move, and we're in deep trouble, but that may actually give us the best chance for Twig, for her sake. I can't think of any other solution that I think will work, or won't cause more harm than good. <coughs> it uh may feel cruel, crude or cruel to you, but we will be respectful. With Twig. We can get the fuck out of here. Get somewhere else. There's no other option. We get her somewhere nice. But, at some fucking point, this is all gonna come to a head. And I just need you guys to know that when it does, we kill the fucking hag. No deals. No talking. We just fucking put her down. That's it. What if she can bring Twig back? What if Torbeck can bring Twig back? We didn't even fucking try it. You want to make a deal with the hag that put her in the ground in the first place? I can't even dance, Kremmy. I know. You're colorblind, probably. No one even knows what the hell's going on with you. Griko's not even a little bit funny anymore. <laughs> and you want to make a deal with the egg for Twig? I don't. Not, I don't. I'm not saying I do. 
my point is, is that when Twig came with us, she knew the risks. She wanted to go on an adventure. She knew they were in danger. But does that mean that the second she goes down, that we just give up? We don't use the options we have to bring it back? At least try? There's nothing good. I could come out of any of this, Crummy. How do you know? Have you been with me this whole time? You look at this fucking horror show? She's made of different stuff. She's of the Feywild. You don't know how it's gonna react. It dragged his ass off the fucking material plane. Maybe that's why it's mutating him like that. I don't disagree that it might be worth trying, but I do not think we should do it here. Again. We may have minutes before Babylonia's guest tells tells her that we're up here, and there's just nothing but a trail of evidence that we've been doing nothing but disturbing and destroying her things, going through everything, finding her secrets, going through her chests, locked things, secrets. There's no way to spin that in our favor. And if we try to make a deal with her, look at what happened to the Triton that we met, who had lost all emotion. Uh, it was an Aladrin. 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 The, the Coral Aladrin. Look at the Aladrin we met. That should tell you everything we need to know about what would happen if we tried to make a deal to bring back Twig with this hag. I think that fellow just wasn't savvy at making deals. He got what he asked for. You think you can outsmart a fucking hag, Kremmy? I can certainly try. And then what? If it all goes south, I can't even fucking stand. My daughter's in the kitchen with a bunch of dead vultures and shit. I don't... Torbeck's almost dead. Yeah, Torbeck doesn't feel very good. Like you say yourself, if she snaps her fingers and just sends Gideon to the other room, locks him up, she'll have us for supper. Babe of our entrails. We have no reason to believe that she'd attack us on site. We have no reason to believe she'd kill us just for talking to her. I don't want to punch first. That's my point. Because I think that we can try to get out of here. I wouldn't be surprised if she knows exactly what the fuck we're doing right now. It's like Frosty was saying, man. I mean, that other, uh, that other Darkling or whatever was doing sketchy shit up here the whole time. She was probably covering her tracks, our tracks. Mm. Probably has no idea we're up here. Regardless, man. Shit is bad enough as is. Twigs down. Can't lose you too. Torbeck maybe. Not you. Uh, no, no. We're, not Torbeck. We're not losing anybody not else. Not even Torbeck. Not right? even Torbeck, all right? He was here, too. I just want to bring him back, not for me, but for you. And that's why I want to try. We're going to try. We can solve this. It's just another puzzle. But I agree. Let's get the fuck out of here. Why don't you collect a bit? <clears throat> Do I see, looking around, any evidence of the combat beyond stuff that we would have done? Like, is there shadow marks or f- shadow stuff like this a body? This room is so cluttered. It is it is true to its name. It is an attic, and it is filled with years and years of collection. But not just not just trinkets and relics of the past, but similar to things that you saw downstairs, dirty dishes and uh, disgusting stuffed taxidermied abominations. Um, Scraps of cloth are laying everywhere and the dust is settled on everything. So looking around, as the dust has now begun to settle, it is beginning to cover up the footprints that you had made. and you imagine that in a short amount of time, there would be no way to tell whatsoever that anything had happened up here. I will uh, 
try to stand up and kind of stabilize myself and uh, reach an arm out to Gricko. Uh, let's Ormac help! And as you Thank reach you. to grab his hand, and you'll see that the flesh that's near the tubes has kind of receded a little bit. Oh. It's, it's a little bit more visible and gross. It might have been from attempting to use it, the wounds that Torbeck had sustained in battle, but it, it looks even worse than normal as I'm trying to help you I'll up. take your hand. Come on! Not there, so you tight, know. not so tight, not so tight! Uh. <sighs> oh, what heaven? And I kind of stumble forward and like very clearly needing to like stabilize myself, not able to stand on my own. Proposal. Uh, yes. We get Twig situated. We make it as though we haven't been here as much as we can in this space. I have this strange cube thing. I'll keep that in my pack. We take any other trinkets that we can as we make our way to the window. At the window, we all need to get out of here. I am not confident our lily pad will carry the f- six of us. We have the charm of the, mar- the monarch. Uh, each of us. A uh, short uh, time to fly, perhaps. Make it around. Down the side of the building. We get and retrieve Hootsie. But I do not propose we make it to the mirror. We continue flying down. I agree. And if we can find uh, Clamperclaw's head, Clamperclaw can lead us to thither. Right there. Oh. <laughs> How convenient. <laughs> Check. We were more focused on the shadow of uh, the Darkling. Could you get it down with your mind? <clears throat> Can I get it down with my mind? You like it. All right. I go over to Twig. Take your glasses off. Fold them. Put them in the crotch of my shirt. Take her... If she has her bag on her, I take her bag off and sling it over my shoulder, uh, and then I pick her up in my arms. You pick her up, and you're looking down at this tiny, cold body. Her arms fall limp at her sides, and you notice that one of them is open, the one that had reached out and clawed at and pulled at Kremi's hat. The other one is held tightly around a small piece of parchment. What does the parchment say, Nikki? Are you, you going to look? Jesus. I'll look at it. Yeah, I'm torturing you. My bad. What you see is a small, a small drawn image of what is very clearly the very first night that you all met. Now, there is no Torbeck in this image, as he had not arrived yet. But it is all of you laying by the fire around Hootsie in the living room area of the inn. And it was clearly drawn by Twig. And at the top, it says, my family. And as you stare down at her form, you hope for the rise and fall of breath that does not come. But what you do see is something you don't expect. Her skin, which had begun to change due to the means of her death. You remember the soft blush of pink right beneath the surface is now masked by a soft brown. Strange lines begin to form and her body begins to get heavier and heavier and heavier. And she begin to notice that her arms where her elbows had been now appear jointed and slowly appearing at the ends of each of her fingers, long threads of rope. And at first you don't believe what you're seeing, but it all begins to come into focus over the course of one minute, maybe two, five, ten, where once had been the body of Twig is now a small marionette in Twig's form. Her arms still limp at her side, but now dangling from them are the ropes that attach to, on each one, two crossed wooden beams that would use to puppet this toy. She looks exactly the same. Nothing else has changed. Her eye is open, beautiful green, but now etched in wood. And as you stare even more at them, you begin to see the twisting bits of what appears to be twigs at first, but they're not. 
their stems of roses wooden rose stems that curl out of her eyes and where her eyes had been you now see two beautiful blue roses guys what What's happening here? Look at Twig. What? She's not. She's not her anymore. I don't think. Oh what the fuck? What the hell? Some kind of hag trick. Yeah. You think this is the hut or, or something or this? I mean, what? What? The, what's happening? What is this? I'm I'll, still her. I'll lean in very closely and having. Uh, Greg and I being the, the two who actually handled the marionette with the sun and moon face mm. in the previous room, does oh. it look like the same make to me? Uh, roll roll uh-huh. a perception check. Can't you just give me the information right away without that? No. <laughs> no <I can't. laughs> oh, not bad. 19. Uh-huh. Looking, you, you move closer, and immediately you catch the, the, the scent of twig. She had a a scent about her that was earthy and autumnal and happy. Like a cozy fire in autumn. And this puppet, this marionette, that smell is just emanating from the wood as if it is one and the same. And as you begin to look at it, you see that the carving of this wooden figurine looks almost exactly like that of the one that you have in your pack. I don't know how this could be. She's transformed into a marionette, like the one we found inside of the chest that you broke. Oh, it's gotta be hag magic! Something is wrong! What the fuck, man? She's turning people into marionettes? Does that mean the thing that you have is somebody? <gasps> and who the fuck cares about that even? What, what do we do about this? Oh, Mr. Mooney was someone who was alive and got killed by... Scabifer. Wait. What the initials in the one you found? It was Endelin. You saw E-M. what you saw, but... You saw those, and they looked like they had been carved in after the fact. Not necessarily a maker's mark, but one of the hags marking their property. Um, I would like say Andy. you could try and look further. On the bottom of the- yeah, on the bottom of the shoe. Uh, you could yeah. try and look further nope. to see if you could see any additional, like a maker's mark or something. Whatever made that other marionette, however it came to be, may have very well been the same magic that's affecting Twig now. This really surprises me, though. This doesn't feel like Bab Lorna. Tobek, can you get Mr. Mooney out of your trench coat? Yeah! And I'll, like, go into my filthy sack, and I'll, like, pull him out. And, like, <laughs> you don't have to give him up, it's just okay. Just go, like, click, 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 okay. click, 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 I'm, like, pulling him you out. You get to keep like, him. stuck on the sack, because I'm trying to pull him out. <laughs> 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 and I'll, like, walk him over to Gricko. <laughs> and I guess, wait, is he, like, close to your size? What? Is he, like, close to your size or I, a little well, shorter? I imagine it was kind of, like, a foot Tiny. tall, and so I'm, like, what, three and a half? Yeah, okay, so yeah, he's, like, yeah. a third of your height. Yeah, I walk him over to you. Well, Twig's a little bit. Yeah, see, right? mm-hmm. yeah. She's like kind of two feet. Yeah, I think it's so. it's a foot tall, the marionette. Okay, so I walk him over to you, and he's like, you know, it has a face on either side of its head, so it's got a face on the front and the back. Oh, one face is the moon, yes. and the other is the sun. <laughs> Here he is, Greco. Still creepy as ever. Uh, Frosty, why don't you take a look? I, I'm, I'm starting to see double. I don't know if I'm gonna. I walk him over to I'm like, gonna make and marionette him over to. Uh, to I'm doing that. It's very weird. Oh, I'm sorry. Just hand me the marionette. I don't think any fellow's gonna look like that, though. That's no. probably just a puppet. We got a brief glimpse of Scabatha. Didn't she look moony? Scabatha? And, and no. Endelin? The Mendelin? I wouldn't say she looked moony, no. I got a glimpse. I, I was the you, only one. You saw one of her, one of her, little uh, little her familiars, <laughs> um, and they were moony. It was a moon face. I don't know if anyone else saw that. Did it, it show up later? I think it may have. You, you described. I described it. it. Basically, it was the sow pig. It was the little fucker, and it was the. Uh, when and, you were like stunned. 
Yeah, yeah, I was like in like the shadow realm when they just took Fruit Sea. Right? Yeah, and then, oh, so yeah, the yeah. Lorne Lang, it was a Lorne Lang, it was the Sow Pig, and then it was the, uh, like, it had a moon mask. It was like a, a child or something with a moon mask. I can show you the photos if you want to see them. Yeah, you just, just yeah. Give me, yeah. yeah, give me a second. I totally recall would like to see it. <laughs> it may have been months ago, but I vaguely Dormac recall it. And Dormac was somewhere else. <laughs> this <laughs> mirage is no mirage. Yeah. Dorn its horn with two or three wings to ruin a prize. <laughs> that character resonated with Dormac. <laughs> Dormac misses her. <laughs> so these are the three. Wolf. So oh, yeah. Them. Oh, that's Holy moony. crap. Yeah, it's based, Mooney. Based Can on Graco's decision. Or d- d- and I would say you could use your dru- druidic magics to replicate images of what they look like so you all have a clear picture. Right. Does the, the marionette I'm sorry. So the Lornling like... is this one. Mm. And this is the South pig. pig. And then that's the pig. We don't, name, we we don't have a name the, for this no, one. No, no, no. Based on what I know from Greco's description of the crescent moon faced servants of Evelyn. And the Zendaya. So we can just call her creeping. Does this feel like a marionettified <laughs> version of one of those oh, right. servants? Oh. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm Does sure. this feel like a marionettified version of one of those um, it does not. minions? Oh. This feels different. I don't think we're going to solve this. We, we, we're wasting time. I I don't know what what what's happening here, but we we need to get out of here. Maybe just getting them as far away from the hut will help. It's a start. Wait, do we think that Endelin made that doll? Based on Greco's description of the creature that Arbor appeared to him when Hootsie was taken during the carnival, there's a very parallel look and feel. And I don't think it's an accident that the moon is a symbol of this hag. Look to see if there's anything else, like a yeah. secret compartment, like a, or like a something beyond the EM. And give it back to Tolbeck when you're done. Thank you. He knows how to pilot it better than me, but I will. Uh, maybe it's like a puzzle box. Roll a an investigation check. I know how. And to for do the that. record, Torbeck does not pilot it very well. He just tries. <laughs> oh, really? It's not good. I, mine was getting all twisted up and doing like. The... <laughs> he just kind of like Torbeck, just like you know. McDonald's openly. Um... <laughs> he does not do that. <laughs> Torbeck wishes he did that. Investigation. I'm going to 26 this business. Oh, Let's go. Shit. Wow. Let's go. You look over the doll, and you do once again see the spot where it was very clear that Endelin had carved her initials into this, marking it as her property. But you continue to look over the doll, the marinette, to see if you can find any maker's mark whatsoever. And at first, you find nothing. Until you notice that it is possible to move back a small part of the carved moon on the front of the face. And you see that right on the inside of it is a maker's mark. Is no fun, is no Blinsky too. Hmm. It says is no fun, is no Blinksy. Blint, Blinsky? Blint, blink, Blinksy. <laughs> blink, blink. Hmm. <laughs> It's nothing at all to me, yeah. Frosty. What's that? That's perplexing, that and I know nothing. Stupid fucking sand. What a what a thing I don't even know about. Torvik's not. Man, Torvik's not very good at grammar, but was gonna say the exact same thing. There's some words missing. Maybe it just doesn't fit on a marionette. Maybe he doesn't like contractions. Two. No, oh, this feels like a dead end. It's given it as thorough an investigation as I possibly could with perhaps one point of exception. <laughs> What's that? What did you leave out? What did you check? Oh, I, I rolled a 19. I could have gotten a 20. Oh, oh. I thought you meant like there was one spot on Never mind. Let's get the fuck out of here, right? Now are we in agreement? Should we endeavor to go through the mirror or should we... No. Wait. One thing at a time. This is, this is fucking important. Uh, what this means thank is that... You. It's not somebody else made it. It's not like Andalyn turned Twig, I don't think. Turned, just wait, does Twig have the same fucking thing? 
Take a look. I start checking twig for Be careful. moon marks and a roll an investigation. Whoa. The marionette I was handling what was delicate. The fuck. And... What's happening that bitch? Oh. oh. That's bad. Sixteen. You you look over Twig's body. You were doing your best to be respectful. Noticing that um, I will say that the DC is lowered a little bit as you have a rough idea of where a mark like this would be. And you move towards the back of Twig's neck. And where there had been hair on this little body, there is now a wig firmly attached to this wooden marionette. And you lift the lower part of the wig cap and there are no marks. Oh. She's got Damn. nothing on her. That's no weird phrases, no moons. I'm What's actually that? not sure if that's a good or a bad thing in this place. Well, Who the fuck knows, man? Maybe that means she's not some sort of horrible construct. It was a whole fucking horrible construct the whole time. That seems unlikely. I mean. I want to imagine that it's some kind of transmogrification. I mean, we've been huffing witch light for how long? And we're transforming, <laughs> and we're becoming different people. I mean, look what it does to Torbeck. Do we think that because Twig joined the adventure and all the effects, it's like, in di- when you die, oh, you become a puppet suddenly. This feels different. It's just like a, another cruel fucking joke. Perhaps in ten minutes, she'll be back to her normal old self. But we have to assume that won't be the case. She suffocated in there, and we both nearly did. Well, I guess that strikes off my idea. I don't think sticking syringes in wood's gonna do any good. (laughs) Thank the gods! Well, Crummy, we... Don't think that Gideon's punchy biz or Frosty's brain and beans and Torbeck's juice and certainly I'm out of juice. What about the Shadow Man? I have no right to ask him to do anything about that. Even if I fucking did. Shadow Man deals in life, death, no death. No rebirth. That's not how that works, Scripto. Once you're dead, you're dead. (sighs) We'll have plenty of time to discuss this when we're alive and away from here. I'm sorry to be the pragmatist here, but You're we right. have to move. This is not the time to be emotional. Frosty, you have the skull, don't you? It's on my back. We have every... Oh, isn't there like a helmet here over oh, that spooky... The He's a very charming... Uh, I can't remember the name in my brain fog. Everyone, we need to hide. The creature. We need to get. What act of desperation compels you to enter my home, little darling? You're fucking kidding me. You hear a soft step after another as Bablorna has clearly made her way up to the attic. She is in the room you were in previously, the one in which you had rescued the twig blights that had been uh, suffering from dehydration. The one that you had just left to chase down the shadow that has now found oblivion in one way or another. And all of you freeze as you listen to the sound of the creaking wood as step after step, Bavlorna slowly makes her way towards the room where you now reside. Gideon, 
Please don't make Hoochie an orphan. What to do, Miss Blightstraw? How you doing this lovely evening? You hear the creaking stop as Babwarna waits for a moment, clearly thinking. I have had an interesting night. Come, my friends from the cooking show. Let us have tea and cakes downstairs in the parlor. Yes? That sounds lovely, fellas. There's what do you think? no need to stay in an old woman's dusty attic. We'd love to join you. Of course, please do lead the way. No, I would not do something so crass. You are guests in my home. You first. All right. My hand on. Got my cane. <clears throat> I'll walk. I'll lead the way down the stairs. I'll proceed to. Blood completely cold. Torbeck will have shrunken down and is like quickly following behind Mr. Crummy. Yeah. Hold up, and I'll stumble. I'm just going to be face first. My like, hips are bent, and I'm just like this on the ground. Can, uh, can someone give me a hand, please? Uh, <laughs> Frost, can you? Yes. Uh, um, <laughs> I can't use my... Uh, ho- ho- hold on, hold on. Uh, hug, hug this. I'll unfurl like a map the lily pad. And if you hug onto it, you can sort of float and just let your feet oh. skip along the ground. Just think where you want to go and lean forward into it. Yeah, yeah, there, 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 there you go. All right, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll stay with Greco. Oh, uh, my mind be. I'll lead the way, and I know exactly where she drinks her tea. So I'll you, down there. You make your way out. Getting well, I, I'll linger for just a moment, and in the the darkness of the room we're in. Uh, would illuminate briefly and softly uh, as flames would start to roll up the the back if like as I'm facing her so not that she would see but if you're paying close enough attention uh, it would push light very briefly as I uh, do everything I can to control a rage that's that's roiling within me uh, uh- and then She's like out in the other room waiting for us, right? Mm-hmm. And so we haven't come out yet. No. Uh, as I am thinking about the little fuckers, I'm thinking about Bavlorna and realize that this lily pad is her like <laughs> car. <laughs> I'll be like, Frosty, that's probably a bad idea. What is? We stole this from Bavlorna. Well, we found it in a pool, and it happens to float. I don't know if it's uh, hers in that way. Is that what you mean? We should hide it. I'm... This is our get-out-of-jail-free ticket, Frosty. I I have Clamper Claw's skull strapped to my back right now. Should I hide that, too? (laughs) (laughs) I'm just gonna shove it. I'm gonna try to shove it in the frost robes. Torbeck's limping behind, Mr. Uh, Hurdle. Roll a deception check. I would say at disadvantage because you have two strengths. So you're gonna have a hard time <laughs> hiding that. It's gonna be like, uh. Oh boy. Oh boy. I would like to twist it. If we don't mind. It's fine. Same. I'm gonna do one more twist, and if it's fate, it's fate. Yeah, no, it's not good. Uh, I think that is a twelve. It is a twelve. Okay, thank you. Uh, as I perfect. As I'm sort of leaving the room and, and and walking down the hallway, I would just sort of kind of very subtly. Just sort of peek in the corners of the rooms where it's the darkest in the shadows, just to see, make sure I don't see any movement of the shadows themselves. Roll perception check. Oh. And I would say, just given your dealings with shadow, you may roll an advantage. 
I'm the shadow man. I work with my hands. You glance around the room, and the only shadows that you see are those that are attached to each of you. It is very clear as you look around that whatever shadow had been here, you have dispersed with, or you have dispersed. I will feel a little more confident as I walk forward and we'll see Crummy Shadow maybe flickers a little more than it should in the in the light as I proceed. You are the first person to make it out of the the storage closet and into Bablorna's bedroom proper <laughs> and you see that she is standing there in a patched work dress that hangs well past her thin and frog-like legs um, as she is almost in a, a squat position, her the top half of her body looking like it is almost cumbersome to carry on the tiny stick-like legs that protrude from the bottom of this mm. nightdress that she has sewn together. All down the front are stains from meals um, gone by and she uh, has the pungent smell of swamp water about her but carried in her spindly arms you see a silver tray laden with bird-shaped cookies they are steaming as if they've just come out of the oven i have brought a little present for my guests to help make you feel more at home Come to Mommy Lorna, have one, Crammy. I would like to hear from a real chef how you like my recipe. Uh, am I still standing? Yeah. Uh, do you mind if I sit first and just get relaxed before In we... my bedroom? Well, we're she motions eat. towards the bed. <laughs> you may sit on the bed if you would like to eat cookie there. Well, I'm, I'm presuming this is where you want to have tea if you're offering me a scone. Uh, I, I can't eat a scone without tea. To help you get down to the room, you look like you've had quite the night. Well, it certainly smells delicious. Uh, I could take it for now, or maybe save it for later. What do you think? We can wait until downstairs, but you will try. I would love to try. With some tea. We will wait for the rest of your friends. It's just that, you know, when I eat scones without tea, it gets stuck to the roof of my mouth. These are cookies. I have a lot of roof of mouth. And a lot of teeth. You probably don't need all of the teeth. Well, I like to, you know, hold on to them. Maybe it's an option. I am a collector too. Mm. Yep. Mm. Just stand here next to me. We will wait for each of them to come out on their own time. She smiles wide, and you watch, and you see that when she's not speaking, her mouth hangs agape as flies dart in and out of it. I would absolutely be next, (laughs) uh, having been (laughs) trying to follow close behind uh, Kremi. And uh, as Torbeck is slinking and kind of limping and Coming around the corner, he'll look over his shoulder and say, uh, Okay, guys, remember, don't touch the lamps. Oh, hey. Oh, hi. You are so much bigger than I remember. Uh, oh, re- remember. You look so soft. Oh, well, no, no one's ever told Torbeck that before. You would make a great coat. Oh. <laughs> and then, like, as quickly as limping Torbeck can, he'll, like, shuffle behind Kremi, and it's almost like, even though he's so much taller, he's, like, trying to hide behind Kremi for protection. We will wait for the rest. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm sure they'll be right here. Torbeck, would you like a cookie? 
Oh, he loves cookies. Actually, that sounds pretty nice. <laughs> Torbeck's on a pretty rough day. This will make you feel so much better. And she hands you a cookie that is clearly the bottom portion is a pigeon and the top portion is a vulture. Um, like a that's what it's shaped like. <laughs> oh, but it's okay. a cookie. Oh, um, a pigeon. Does does the cook does it smell like a cookie? <laughs> like would Torbeck think that uh, this is anything other than a cookie? No. Torbeck eats the cookie. Uh, you go ahead and benefit from a long rest. Yes. Yes. The, I immediately perk up, you, baby. You you take a bite and it is delicious. You there are notes of cinnamon. Uh, there's a creaminess. Um, and. Maybe as, as you bite into it, you immediately see the flash of iridescent rainbow colors, and you realize that there is somewhere in this recipe basil berries. <gasps> oh, this is the best cookie Torbeck has ever had! Thank you! You're very welcome, Torbeck. Mr. Krabby, did you try one of these? No, I'm saving mine for tea later. Oh, Torbeck might have seconds, even though it's kind of rude and greedy. <laughs> I need to make extras in case Torbeck had it in Oh, night. thank you. Welcome. There's an entire tin downstairs with your name on it. Then she pinches your cheek. <laughs> we will wait <clears throat> for the rest. <clears throat> I guess we're putting all of the things that we've stolen into as many hidey holes <laughs> as possible. Um, I'm going to keep uh, at my side accessible the square cube that I found when I was inside of the fish's mouth and do my best to fold and pack and put everything in a way that looks like I didn't steal anything from this person. And then I will do everything that I can to yeah. support Greco. All too. except for <laughs> Thanks, Rusty. which was placed upon your person by Greco in a haphazard way. Yeah. Okay. So it's just like underneath my armpit. Yeah. In a very obvious way. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Go on, Greco. Oh, thank you. The two of you shamble out and uh, into view of Bavlorna. She stands there in her. Um, in her filthy nightdress as Torbeck gobbles down a cookie and Kremi looks on suspiciously. She doesn't look directly at you, at least not with both eyes. One of her eyes is watching Torbeck as he gobbles down his cookie happily. The other eye, however, moves on its own accord and follows your movements into the room. It looks like Frost has my lily pad. You found it. I'm oh. so happy. Yes, uh, we it found it. It's been missing for a long time. Yes, it, I believe that it was clogged inside of your bath. You, you see her face changed almost immediately. You mean my bath has clogged? It uh, had clogged, uh, actually. There was a terrible creature inside of it. I don't know if you knew that. Uh... Was it some kind of pet, perhaps? It was this large uh, worm. No, no, we took care of the claw for you. With a strange jerky movement, she tosses the tray of cookies onto the bed and rushes towards you faster than you would expect as she clasps her, her spindly hands around your arm. You have done Lorna a great favor. Do you see the cracked and broken skin? I can hear it. Yes, she rubs her finger along it, and you can hear the way that it, the dry skin, as it rubs against her yellow nails. I, feel I have not been able to bathe properly for a long time, for it aches my weary bones and my tight flesh. Oh, speaking of the cookie healed Torvex, go! Fuck! Tor- ah! Torvex's teeth looks great. Ah! Well, how did that happen? Oh, I got a delicious cookie! I see. <clears throat> yes, and she she quickly moves back in her strange, jerky way um, and picks up the tray of cookies. You both look like you could use a little picker up or please. Have one of my cookies. They're really good! Yeah, I could use a cup of coffee. Do you got do you got that? We have tea downstairs. Just just drink the tea. 
Ooh. Torbeck, are they Torbeck good or are they good? What does that mean, Frost? They're good cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I remember back at the carnival, I once watched you empty out a trash can, <laughs> pour the water in the bottom into a flagon, and drink that. Torbeck fails go, to see how that's relevant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I gag. I Torbeck won't. doesn't bring up every time you get a hairball, Frost. Well, they're inevitable. It's a supernatural part of life as opposed to drinking garbage water. I guess I'll have one of the cookies. This one is for you. Oh. And she hands she hands you a cookie that is uh, the bottom portion of it is an owl and the top portion of it is a bluebird. You are a uh... Skilled and creative, Bavlorna. Mm. And it tastes delicious. How there's is the a hint of there's a hint of citrus. Is it good or told back good? It's it's good. And you benefit from a long rest. Should I eat it? If you don't, I fear that you will. <laughs> not be long for this world. <laughs> uh, I would say that it is more rejuvenating than a cup of coffee and quite flavorful. See, Torbeck told you guys! I just don't trust you about food, Torbeck. Uh, Which one is for... He's having trouble lifting his arms. Which one is for Greco? This one is for Greco. And she hands one that is the top of a toucan and the bottom of a parrot. Oh. You don't have to lift your arm. I'll tropical. I'll mind hand it if you want it. <laughs> just, just open wide. That's, Here comes the toucan. That's, that's, hum- <laughs> that's humiliating. Well, give, give it. Yeah, I, I can. What is, what I can. Two cans. I can line. do it. I'm, oh. <laughs> I catch it. You can. Can you do? You want another go? <laughs> no. Ah. Uh, 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 the sound frogs. What sound? What does a toucan sound like? Oh, I was going to do, uh, when do we want cookies? No. <laughs> That's not what a, t- a toucan bird sounds like at all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and if you enjoy the benefits of a long rest. I suddenly just, like, inflate. <laughs> wow. Uh, Kremi, uh, these actually, um... Uh, they're they're full of a uh, spark of life that I can't quite articulate to you at this time. No, I see that. No, I definitely, I definitely see that. I'm fully rejuvenated in my beans. You understand? <laughs> you understand all the all, all the problems that we could have. All my powers are back. When it's, it's almost as if I've had it's, it's time for breakfast, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm full of full, full of energy. <laughs> you, you eat the fucking cookie. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I respond? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, number one, you're always ready for breakfast, Frost, but number two, I mean, yeah, just because it's good doesn't mean there's not going to be some sort of horrible side effect after an hour or two. So oh, gonna... so, certainly. You, you're going to wait for an hour to see if we just deflate? I'm just going to have a nice cup of tea. Okay, if, if, if a battle breaks out, you better chomp this down good. Will do. Frosty, mm. you, you said this was quite good. You should have said it's more than good. It's great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is great, isn't it? That's... Great, great is the word that I should use. <laughs> that it is great. Really. You know, that, that really rolls off the Yeah, top. you really undersold that. No, well, it is uh, I mean, you're, you're quite ter- good. Your terrible bird sounds aside, <laughs> you tried. I, I'm, I'm no uh, bird quill, uh, bird, bird dology. I, I, I don't know the word for it. I. I don't care Avian for birds. We I all just... know a toucan sounds like. Uh... <laughs> Is that what they sound like? Yes, obviously. Uh, I don't know who's closer. What would an owl bluebird sound like? Oh, Torbeck can do that one too. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and how about the. What was it? The vulture pigeon? The pigeon? The, the, the pigeon? Uh, you'll be surprised to know. <laughs> Torbeck can do that one. Uh, let's hear it. Ah! I rush out of the room. <laughs> What's happening? Is she cutting Torbeck? Uh, no, no. Torbeck is doing animal impressions. Look at these lovely cookies. 
I am not hurting anybody. I are simply give brought the cookies. I you have one for you rest. to get in and one for Twig. Uh, I don't eat cookies. Well, we will give one to the brownie. I'm sure she would enjoy it. We will wait. Uh, she has one for Twig? Mm-hmm. Curious. What do you mean? The brownie. Your little friend, the one that helped you at the cooking show. The one that follows behind. Not quite one of you, but still family. Well, we could take it for. We will wait before we go downstairs. These rooms can be quite dangerous. Oh. Well, uh... Maybe, Kid, if you could uh, present Twig. Present Twig? Showing her Twig, man. Well, I don't think she's a fucking marionette. I don't think she's gonna eat a goddamn cookie. You, know, you want me to take her mouth and go like this? Or is that what you're doing with your name, man? Yeah, man no. You want me to use her mouth like a marionette mouth and just chop her a cookie? I, was I see more, calmly. I was thinking more like a, like, like a nut bag. <laughs> he says like, calmly. He says calmly. A little bit of lever action on the back. Where am I supposed to find the fucking lever, man? On her back? You want me to just insert a lever into her back so I can open and close her jaw Did so she can eat a fucking egg? Into the little one. Can you just give us a second? We're in a yes, dispute. Yes, please. No need to raise your voice. We're all friends. It's my normal talking voice. I apologize for him. Sorry about Don't that. Don't apologize for me. All right? Sorry. Sorry about that. Look, here's the thing. Do you mind if we hit, just have a quick sidebar? Just go in the corner of the room? No, not at all. Please take your time. I will talk with Torbeck, Draco, and Frost. Yes? Yes! Look, do you see some other way out of this situation, kid? What, what's even happening right now? Look, I don't think she's gonna let us leave until she knows where the fuck Twig is. She wants, she wants to make sure that there's no brownie sneaking around her fucking bedroom. And I'm supposed to show her that Twig is dead in a, in a marionette and she was in the frog's mouth? Well... And, and we dragged her out and she's not breathing? You'd rather say, oh, she's dead. And she didn't make it, and we don't show her the puppet. Or maybe we say she's not dead, but she got mysteriously transmogrified into this puppet thing. We don't have to give all the fucking details, but we're gonna have to explain her away somehow. Fine, show her twig. If she does anything fucking weird with it, like adding a lever to her back or start carving her name into her, <laughs> I'm gonna fucking go crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna tackle her. I'm gonna punch her. Just don't let her. Just don't let her hold her. Just, just you know. So look at her fucking weird arms, man. <laughs> hold on to Twig. All right, I'm going to hold on to Twig. I'm just saying, if she rushes me, I'm going to get a little fucking crazy. No, no, kid, look. <laughs> Unless she physically fucking she arms fucking you, you understand? I'm just saying, if she gets within striking range. No, 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 no. If she moves at she me, might. man. She, she, I'm she a little skittish. A, she kind of has like that creepy like, old lady. Oh, I hate that creepy old lady shit, she man. Really kind of like, oh, I hate old people. I don't like when they come near me. And they walk up. Him. Sometimes they just move real quick, you know, and you're like, what the hell? Where'd that come from? It's a possibility. Like, I mean, you you would reach five fucking feet. You know how far that is? I mean, yeah. It's that far, man. It's exactly that far. Well, look, all I'm saying is please don't cause a ruckus unless she fucking means us ill. And so far, the fellas have rejuvenated with these fucking cookies. So why don't you have a cookie and I think you'll feel a lot better. I'll eat any of this ugly, dumb hag's cookies, all right? But I won't cause a ruckus. I cannot, however, promise that I won't start a kerfuffle. As you guys are done your sidebar and you, like, come back, you hear Torbeck talking to Bev Lorna, and then the licorice that Torbeck ate wasn't licorice at all. It was a rubber arm. And Torbeck's pretty sure there's still some inside of Torbeck. Do you want to have it inside there? Or do you want to have it out, you poor thing? Torbeck is indifferent. Mm, did it taste nice? Yeah, didn't, Torbeck didn't stop. Oh, hey, guys. I've been just, I'm just sitting there completely silent, like, 
<laughs> like looking at her. Oh, as soon as you uh, uh, both arrive, uh, actually, uh, 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 thank you for coming back and interrupting Torbeck. Uh, I did have I did have one question. Uh, the eyes' ability to look around. Did you were you born naturally with that ability, or is that something that you trained over oh my time? God. <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, Frost! You can't just ask people that. <laughs> it is okay. We oh, all raised in balls. What the fuck is going on? Even Torbeck yes. knows that's rude. And I'm from the small. <laughs> it is okay. It is quite useful. <clears throat> Look, what Gid meant to say earlier is that he loves cookies. <laughs> I've never seen him turn one down, but he's going to save his related too, if you don't mind. That is all right. Now we will wait for the brownie. Here she is. She immediately drops the uh, tray again and skitters hey! towards you. <laughs> she, <laughs> what? She what? Stops. What? She, Why are you moving so quick? It is a puppet. A marionette. It's twasy. Yeah. I don't know. She did something weird happen. Now she looks like this. But she can do this. <laughs> she died in the toad. But you know this already. Scabitha's toad. Scabitha. You're saying it's not your fucking toad? My wicked sister's horrific toad. My horrific Scabitha. That bitch. Fucking She's Scabitha. evil. I not like me. Granny. Granny Lor- Lorna. Mommy Lorna. I'm very kind. I bring cookies. But my sister is wicked. And evil and twisted. Wait, wait, so wait, so, so what, which sisters owned this toad? Scabitha. Scabitha. So you're saying it's Scabitha. Scabitha. <laughs> the one not, that lurks within Thither. Not yes. Andalin Moongrave. No, this is Scabitha's work. Scabitha <laughs> and not Andalin. Scabitha is the toy Scabitha. mistress. This so has is what? the toy mistress. Oh. This has the markings of her toys. Well, what are you saying? Who would have known? Can this be undone? I imagine it can. Well, fucking imagine it a little harder. I mean, <laughs> what the hell, lady? You might have to travel to Loom Lurch if you're going to find out what my wicked sister has done. <sighs> I, I think... have simply stolen the toad. I had not quite figured out. I had three scrolls around here somewhere that I was going to use on that toad to figure out how it worked. Ah, we didn't see any scrolls. It's fine. I'll find them eventually. <laughs> um. <clears throat> I'm like trying to knock on the like, kick the, ch- the broken chest with the whole. <laughs> 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 Find some like garbage or like piles of clothes. Oh, do a sleight of hand, please. (laughs) (laughs) His nice, like his nice shoe, and just slowly. Surely there's like nearby (laughs) cabin. Yeah. Uh, A of hand might be pretty good. Uh, There we go. Good news. Uh, you, you're easily able to, um, as she as she goes to pick up the uh, silver tray, um, where she's going to pick it up from is really close to where the broken treasure chest or the broken chest was. Um, and as you see this, you move forward to kick it, but she stumbles a bit, and you hear the um, silver uh, clatter on the ground, uh, and all the noise is able to mask as you kick the um, the chest beneath the bed. <laughs> Um, she writes herself and um, ar- arranges the cookies. Let us continue this conversation downstairs. No, yeah, absolutely. Let Mommy Lorna try to help the precious boys. We could use it. You first, please. Yeah, absolutely. I think I know the way. And she motions for you. I, for the sake of brevity, you are all able to make your way out of the room and downstairs quickly. She did not seem to notice the uh, clapper claw skull that you had hidden on yourself, and she made no motion to take the lily pad away from you, at least mm. not as of yet. <clears throat> Do I remember who has the scrolls that she was looking for? I do. Crummy. 
I wanted to remind myself of that. Yeah. Um, and I, but I do have uh, also this like strange cube thing. Mm -hmm. okay. She didn't seem to notice, or if she noticed, she didn't care about the things that you. She's had just on mad. Your I'm mooning through all of, like it's a complete um, X-ray. And she, um, <laughs> you begin to make your way downstairs, and you are met with the sight of this place. A figure is seated in a time-worn armchair, tall lean woman of gray complexion dressed in black with a wide-brimmed hat obscuring her eyes. This room is filthy. Dirty dishes and bits of discarded food lie everywhere. The furniture was perhaps once of fine quality, but now stains of mysterious origin model every surface, and the upholstery has been patched numerous times. Set with its back to the wall in one corner is a hulking wooden cabinet. Sturdy legs support the bottom of the cabinet six inches above the floor. A decrepit wooden staircase, which is the one you're on, climbs up the wall. And that is where you hear Bavlorna. She shuffles down the stairs behind you, one foot after the other. Loud, clanging sounds as, the, as she shakes the silver tray um, and motions for you to take a seat. Please, take a seat next to our guest. She is not the one for talking. Oh, I do, Miss Lady. The name's Beverly Cruz. It's a pleasure to meet you. That's are you standing in front of her? Yeah. You are standing in front of this figure, and there is no motion. She does not <laughs> raise her arm to shake your hand. She does not even tilt her head up to look at you from beneath the brim of her large hat. I will say one thing you do notice is that even with the amount of light that's spilling out in this room, she has no shadow. <clears throat> All right, then. Uh, yeah, that's no problem. That's no problem. And I'll just, like, find a seat. Torbeck will also find a place to sit uh, and not address this person seeing Kremi's failed attempt uh, to get any kind of communication from them, and we'll just find a place to sit. Jenny will sit as well. Can I, like... I'm gonna like be scowling at her, and I'm gonna go to the look at the other person and scowl at her. Do I get any kind of sense of like what's her deal? What what's whose deal? The other guest. In in what sense? Like what's wrong with her? Does anything seem wrong? Uh, I the sense, you know. Roll a sense. Roll check. an insight. <laughs> Let's roll an insight check. We'll see how insightful you can be about the situation. Natural 20. Oh! oh hold on, hold on. Oh, not extras. Her oh, hat is wide-brimmed, and it obscures most of her face. 25. So it is it is hard to tell. You can see... I'm low. Uh, you can't really see her face. You, you may be low, <laughs> but you still struggle to see her face. What you do notice is that she is almost completely unmoving. No, she is completely unmoving. You don't even see a rise or fall of her chest. Oh my god, this is not good. Does it, does Mikey get the sense, or Grigio get the sense because we killed the shadow? It's the same woman, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we killed the shadow, we killed her? <laughs> I would say you would have no idea. Kind of weird, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm just fe I'm seething. I'm absolutely seething, uh, and I will just I will take a seat. Uh, I'll just take a seat. I um, seeing Grico's behavior and seeing how how this played out with the guest, I would imagine that I might not. Uh, notice all of those details, but in my mind, this is the person responsible for Twig's death because it was the shadow. Form. It was the shadow form, and I'll take a seat. Lorna walks over to the coffee table in the middle and begins to pour each of you tea. One, two, three, four, five, six cups of tea. She pushes the tea towards each of you and then places one directly in front of the other guest, the Darkling Elder that sits here with all of you. For you, too, 
she puts a cookie on the saucer of each of your teacups. And then for you as well, Torbeck, she places three cookies. Yay! <laughs> and she slowly sinks into her um, her her armchair, her stained and moth-eaten <laughs> armchair. Her body sinks down into it, where you can tell that over years of use, the padding inside of this has become matted and separated. The springs are worn and rusty. It creaks under the weight of her body as she settles in and she pulls her her thin legs up off of the ground and tucks them under (sighs) her body. (sighs) As she sits there, her mouth agape, the flies flying in and out as she watches you. She'll occasionally pick up her teacup and with shaking hands brings it to her lips. And as she pries back her lips, you can hear the cracking of her skin, her dried frog-like skin. As she takes the cup and just pours it into her mouth in one fell swoop and gulps it down before refilling it again. Please drink your tea and have your cookies. It will make you feel so much better. I'll take my teacup. Torbeck is such a good little boy. Oh, thank you. Uh, I want to smell the tea. What does it smell like? Uh, it smells like bergamot. <laughs> I'll touch the yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, my oh. tea. It's the rough rough approximation of Earl Grey. (laughs) There's fucking human teeth in my gums. (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) Oh, I got a juice. There's old man sweat. (laughs) (laughs) Like the rim of a margarita. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll have a little sip. Have it tastes like tea. Mm. There's a saucer of cream, a bowl of uh, sugar cubes. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> uh, how have you been? It's been a couple days, I think, since we uh, last chatted. You missed the dinner that we had scheduled, but it's fine. Lorna holds no grudge. The heroes of Downfall, the winners of the competition, are clearly new celebrities in town and too busy to come up to a hut and have dinner with an old woman. To be fair, we lost the time. You lost time? How unfortunate. No, he would have come. I specialize in the finding of lost things like time. Hmm. We forgot to beware the forest mushrooms and lost like three no. days. You should beware mushrooms of all kinds, especially here. How much time can you find? Depends on how much time you have lost. Uh, Torvac's missing a considerable chunk. Then we should talk, Torbeck. Okay. Well, I mean, in terms of what? Like, you know, world history or, I don't know, current events? You have any kind of celebrity magazine subscriptions that you keep up to date on? We should talk about the pressing issues at the end. Oh, world events. All right. What do you think, Jones? Okay. Uh, the new, The new... Government that was just installed it seems to be doing pretty well. What do you think? I think they're doing a great job. <coughs> <coughs> yes, their tax policy is sound. Why don't we ask Charm how she feels about the new events that are happening? Charm? I'm sorry she can't talk when she's dead. <coughs> oh. Well, oh, this took a turn. <laughs> Good riddance. It seems that you were upstairs exterminating a pest. Why don't we talk about those current events? Eat your cookies. All right. Jury's still out on if the transition from a Hereditary monarch, 
hereditary monarchy hereditary monarchy <laughs> to a constitutional republic <laughs> will succeed without a drastic shift in culture for the bullywugs. And you the cookie? I do. You benefit from a lot of that. Gideon, eat your cookie. You look very, very sweaty. Damn it, that's feel good. <clears throat> I'm full. Thank you. Uh, I stare at her, and <clears throat> I don't drink the tea, I don't eat the cookie, but I'll put my hand on the teacup, uh, and I start twisting it. While I look at her, and I twist it counterclockwise. Oh, I'll just keep doing it. No. Uh, a group of shooter wins. Yeah! <laughs> me too! <laughs> I don't do anything but look at her and twist my teacup counterclockwise. She, at Jesus this point, Christ. doesn't seem to notice. You're so okay. fucked. God, you're so fucked. You fun. should eat the cookie, even if you are feeling a fool. It will make Gideon a healthy boy. Do I notice what Gideon's doing? Uh, roll perception check. I think it's this big boy. Oh, you know yeah, what? Pretty good. You know what? Acceptable money Acceptable is Derek. Acceptable money hey, is Derek. Derek. <laughs> 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 as you nice to say it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. I'm in your fucking head. <laughs> yes, yes, I don't be in this. This role is fair compensation. Yeah. <laughs> it's meaningfully important. Yeah. Um, uh, all that to say, uh, I get a 17. <laughs> yes, you are able to see what he's doing. You are you watch as he reaches towards the teapot. Um Having said that he was not hungry, you can you sense the anger. It seems strange to you that he'd reach towards the teapot with no intention to drink it, and you see his hand rest atop the lid as he begins to spin it wittershins. Then I also turn it kind of clockwise. <laughs> can you remind me when Frost learned the wittershins information? I'm trying to recall exactly uh, what, how that played out. What do you mean? I it went, I just spent like five minutes not RPing, going through my notes looking for the word Wittershins, and I did not write it down. He yeah. was the king of hearts. The king! It was the king of hearts? He's allergic. He told us to battle. She's, all she's three allergic of them. to people walking Wittershins. I couldn't remember who was sooner than that or who was Walking that. Wittershins? Yes, yeah, so it's not just Wittershins in general, it's to people walking oh, in Wittershins. So I if you were to stand up. <laughs> but it does <laughs> seem. <laughs> it's a very threat. <laughs> what you were doing is a very threatening move. Oh! Okay. Wow. That's for sure. It's a show of power. It's a show of I power. Know. Okay. I know you see uh, that. Seeing that, I will start to stir my tea in the same direction. <clears throat> I'm happy to go over the favors we've done out of the, you know, it generosity seems. of us. If oh I am God. if I am thinking about this correctly, that you have unclogged my drain. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, yeah, yes we did. You have found my lily pet. You did. Certainly did. It's right there. You have disposed of the sneaking shadow that attempted to steal from me. It was And in doing so shed light on an individual sent by my sister to thwart me oh. for this reeks of Endolin. Endolin doesn't sound the same. Could you think your sister sent the shadow that was snooping around Who upstairs? else works in shadows like Endolin? Scavifer, maybe. There at her <laughs> theater high in the mountains. Oh, in the mountains, huh? You should Playing add it to your famous book. shadows. Her little scissors that will snip the shadow from your very body. What did you say about my book? I, I've heard a lot of great things about you, 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 your book. I feel like you should add this transcription to that book. My book is missing. What? What do you know about the location of my book? In child, if I were you, I would not lie to me. Could you describe your book for me? She roll a persuasion check. Torbeck begins to sweat. If I have an opportunity to send a message with my mind, I will take it. I start spinning fast. It's <laughs> pretty good roll. I'm spinning it so fast. It's like pretty good. Coming out the night. I'm going to plan. 
Just like we drew it out. Yeah. <laughs> 20, 22. It is a book bound in human skin. It is large. Mm-hmm. And inside, in beautiful script, are written on mottled pages all of the grievances I have against anyone. Didn't those darklings try to sell us that book? That's exactly right. We, we were visiting the, uh, you know, now that you mention that, that sounds awfully familiar. We, uh, we were looking around the shop with the big thundercloud balloon uh, that looked kind of like she the did. The balloon that charm arrived. I should have known the thunderclouds. The lightning, just like the lightning rods in Yon. I, I think I saw a book that was big and was covered in human skin. Is there a chance that, that they she, stole it from you? She pilfered my book when she came to have tea. She has been here every single day, mm-hmm. telling me falsities about my sisters, getting on my good side. All the while, she rummages through poor Babylonus things to take what does not belong to Charm. And one of those things was my book. I should have known. Well, if you want us to go down there right now, kill them, and get your book back, we're happy to do so. No, this is fine. Pimplorna is capable of getting all the book back. Well, man, it seems like your sister's up to no good. She's stealing your My book. sisters are always up to no good. Whether it be Bab- whether it be Skebutha, or whether it be Indolin, it matters not. I'm sorry about all that. Family drama, it's its tough to deal with sometimes. It's a little awkward. You know, family <laughs> it's difficult intense. being the only sister worth her licking salt. At least you only got to deal with two of them. Three, unfortunately. Oh, you have three sisters. Is that yes. right? Gid, I thought we had heard that you have two sisters. We don't talk about the baby. The baby? Oh, younger sister. Last child syndrome sort of thing. Skibisa, however. Skibisa. She is a thorn in your side now, as well as mine. You have done me a great service. Times three, it seems. The well, bath, the book, well, and the bitch. Or the betrayer, and, maybe. And we, no, we, I like my work better. Just to be fair, we also help make dinner. They will clear that beehive out. Man, the man. Bees. Yeah. It's all bees. Just keep track. The, the beehive may have been something that she wanted to have around. Oh, we did So it seems that if you are looking for help with your marionette problem, maybe let Mommy Lorna help you. I'd be open to hearing what you could offer, with no guarantee that may that we would come to you know agreeable terms. I could but bring your little friend back for you. Stop spraying the cup. What are you talking about? I thought you said we have to go to Yon or wherever. Yes, you will have Never. to go there if you would like to find out all of what's happened. But for the meantime, I could bring her back for you. Bring her back how? Like as a uh, some kind of creepy one of these things you got running around here. It literally no, they do not contain the souls of the living or the former living. They are simply creations, like a a warlock would create. I'm sorry, too close to home, but a familiar. You see, they are like my familiars. I said sorry. So theoretically, if I smash one brains out with a giant metal boot. Uh, it's not like a thing, it's more just like a... It is sentient and has feelings, mm. but it has no soul, so once it is go. dead, it has nowhere to go. Like yeah, a you're... Tamagotchi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tom who now? <laughs> Tom <laughs> from out? <laughs> Tom the banjo player? Everyone oh, just went to the drawer yeah. where they left the Tamagotchi. <laughs> it's just yeah. running out of battery. <laughs> 14 poops on this side. <laughs> it turns out the only emotion they can feel is fear. And pain. <laughs> <laughs> it's abandonment. 
<clears throat> That's interesting. No deal. And that is not to say that there would not be issues. Something like this is difficult, a soul coming back from the other side. Oh, she might be would... scared or weakened, but she would not be evil. She would not be different. She would be nothing other than Twig, as you knew her. So what you're saying is that the soul's currently gone, and you can bring it back. It is not inside the puppet, I am loath to tell you. Yeah, I don't think so. But nothing would make me happier than for you to go to Thither, and I could help you get there, and give you the information that you need. All I require is one additional thing on top of what you've done for me already, because this is a difficult thing, the bringing back of a life. Deep in the heart of Wormwarch, a giant oak that has fallen onto the, onto the ground in the heart of Peter. This tree is where my sister lives. And at the very heart is a circular room. A room with portraits of all of the sisters. Pavlona. Endolin, Skepitha, and yeah. Tasha. And in huh? this room, I would like for you to take my portrait wife and bring it back to me. I do not want my visage hanging inside of her home for her to do unknown and untold deceptions with. She should not look upon these beautiful guys. Oh, it's... Okay. Never mind. Wait a minute, Tasha? Mm-hmm. Like that hot robot from the carnival? <laughs> oh, I, I remember the statue. Is that what you're referring to? Maybe Tasha's a common name. You know, tree Are you talking about just that thing that sat outside of the... Like Hall of Mirrors or something? It was like the first thing we did when we walked into the carnival. We saw that little ha- that little halfling fella. Oh, yeah. yeah. He started laughing and we looked over and it was like an <laughs> overwhelmingly hot inanimate Tasha. Uh, Torbank misses all the good stuff. <laughs> well, wasn't it just a statue and it was a robot? It was like... Uh, is it one of those like? I thought, are you oh, asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you. Oh, uh, if you're asking Nikki, the DM, so Derek. It, yeah, it's like when you if, when you yeah. see those old Zoltan carnivals or some and you see like Zoltan and it's like oh, an animatronic. The, 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 man, I completely it forgot. I thought, just a, I thought it was just a. I thought it was just I was born in 400 log cabins. <laughs> <laughs> she moved like. For both rival grizzle grizzle. <laughs> yes. I remember the robot now, although I didn't call it by that name at the time. That's your sister? She's in a witch like carnival? Is a robot stuck in the cage? I imagine it was sort of like an idol the to Tasha. The topic hand is Skibitha and Indolin. Yeah, I don't think she wants to talk about the full sister too much. Oh. Let's not push it, fellas. Hmm. What do you think? Now it Agreed. seems... that Indolin sent this person here. This dead woman. You did not kill her, by the way. Let your conscience remain clean. I did plan on asking how you did it. <laughs> Nay, have my ways, but I will not sully your image of me by telling you. I'm looking the bottom of my tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the tea leaves are like. <laughs> <laughs> you see a grim. <sighs> oh. <laughs> so I have my issues with Indolin. Who knows what part she is to play in all of this. But if you are looking for revenge for what happened to your little one, it is Skabitha. Skabitha. Who you need to seek. For it is her told that it has done this in her wicked ways. So you're saying you can bring Twigsy back. We go over there. Take a portrait off the wall, get it back here. That no is swear. That is all I ask. It is a simple bargain. I get what I want from a place I cannot go. 
and you get what you want from a place you cannot go. <laughs> Gideon does it just for that reason. Yeah. Hell, you want me? Yeah. Uh, and that's it. There's no other strings attached. I looked at the sweet dog. There are other strings attached. <laughs> and I offer you a deal that is is good only because you have already shown your kindness and support of Lorna. Uh, yes. Good. We have. It is clear that you are friends. And not false. Yes? No, absolutely. We are yeah. allies now. We happy to help. Against my wicked sister. It's terrible sister. Mm, Snoop scarif. on you, your books. Oh, well, there's nothing worse. And I think that they stole a whole lot of other things. We should probably also get back from them, if you wouldn't mind. This charm has been here day after day. I have no doubt that the balloon is filled with my belongings. Do you, uh, have any plans for Charm's body? I don't know, what do you, I don't even know what I'm asking. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Oh. <laughs> I will take, I'm just really creeped out. I will take her insides out and toss them into the swamp below. Oh. I will stuff her body. Redress her in finery that suits the type of woman that she was, mm -hmm. and I will deliver her as a gift to her sisters when I take back my book. See, aren't you glad I asked? Uh, uh, no, <laughs> we have some business to finish up here in Downfall. Shouldn't take too long, uh, but if you're willing to move us on along to uh, to Vida, we would certainly appreciate it. Do we have a deal? You will procure my portrait for me from Loom Lurch, deep within the heart of Caesar. Yes? So all, all we gotta do is steal one fucking portrait from a creepy hag? Now be careful, I have been kind to you. I cannot promise my sister will be so nice. You are now friends of one of her most hated sisters. Well, no, clearly you're the good one. And so yes. I'm sure the others are very little I have no doubt. <laughs> what do you think? It sounds easy enough, Mr. Crammy. I mean, if she can do what she says she can do, what the hell? Why the hell not? We got to see if that'll work before we go all the way out there, though. She's got to show us something. Right now, we got nothing. Well, that's part of the deal. Right? You're going to bring it back right now. I will bring her back to you right now. And all I do is steal the portrait. We have a deal. You will travel into the heart of Loom Lurch and you will steal a portrait for me. The portrait of me. And bring it back here. And in turn, I will return Tweak to you. I'll leave it up to you. Fine. We'll go do this thing for you. She re she reaches out her long <laughs> hand. Take my hand, Gideon. Do <sighs> we shake on it? Place her on the table. She clears off a bunch of things on the table and she looks over Twig and she begins to mutter words that you have never that you've never heard before. Even those of you that speak Sylvan do not un understand the words that she's saying. It sounds like some guttural chant that comes from deep within her as she moves bits and parts of the body. And then she moves towards the hearth that sits in the corner of this room where you see a medium-sized cast iron cauldron that's bubbling with a dark green, thick, and viscous liquid. She takes a vial and fills it quickly. She 
jerkily moves back towards you, uh, almost as if she's skipping. Um, or is, it's, it's like a, if you could visually see a CD skipping is how she moves, is if in one moment she just disappears for a second and it's in, into another. It's, it's horrific in, in its motion until she is over Twig's body and she tilts the jaw open and begins to pour the viscous liquid down into her throat. Breathe now, little one. Return to the ones you love. So you are commanding. You wait a moment, two. Nothing happens. And then you see the arm begin to move. Oh, 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 I'm so tired. Oh, I can't see anything. And you watch as Twig moves. But there is no Twig body. It's the body of a marionette that moves before you. As she moves her arm, you see the ropes um, slide off the table and the, um, the wooden crosses clatter to the ground. The two blue roses that had formed where her eyes were, the wooden roses, are still firmly fixed in place. I can't see anything! Ah, ah, where am I? Someone turn on the lights! Who's there? I can hear you. Twizzy, you're dying! Oh, get him! Hi, hi. Where are you? Hey, I'm right here. I got your glasses right here. Does she have eyes? No, where her eyes had been, two um, blue roses oh. had grown up out of them. And um, they're oh. wooden roses, uh, part of the marionette facade, but there she has no eyes in her sockets. Oh. <sighs> I mean, Fuck. that means to, blue roses mean nothing to me. Very peculiar. Um, I take the glasses off my shirt and uh, hesitantly I go, hey, wait, here, try, try these. You put them uh, onto her and immediately uh, hear, Oh, that's so much better, huh, Gideon? Oh, hey, Twigsy, how you feeling? You still stare into the two blue roses, but apparently she can see you. I'm okay. I'm feeling a little stiff. Yeah, oh, well, you know how uh, on these adventures we're always uh, things are happening to us? Like, yeah, uh, I took a nap inside of Beth Laura's house. Where do you think she is right now? Well, I mean, she's kind of sitting right there. What do you mean she's right behind me? She's right behind you. You're lovely guests of Babylon. Hey, little twig, what a do? No, no, it's in. No, 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 it's no, okay. hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I do it a third time, she's still going to be there. She's still going to be there, yeah. Eat a cookie. Eat a cookie? Eat a cookie. Can I have a cookie? They're pretty yeah. good. Yeah. She, she, she reaches out with her jointed fingers, and you can hear all of the mechanisms in her body moving. Uh, the metal pieces sliding against metal, the dragging of the ropes as she moves her hands forward. And she reaches out and grabs a cookie, and she begins to um, chomp away at it, her wooden teeth um, grinding up the pieces of cookie as she chomps it down. And as she swallows, you see the bits of cookie just flying out of the sides of her jaws. She has no stomach. There's nowhere for this to go, but she seems to enjoy it. Like crumbs are just... Mm-hmm. She cookie monster. Yeah. <laughs> that was delicious. Oh my gosh. Oh. Uh, that was good, huh? Yeah. Hey, 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 how you feeling? I'm stiff. Oh, it's been a crazy day. I had a really long nap and a super weird dream. Yeah, what was that? I don't remember it anymore. I just remember waking up going, wow, that was a weird dream. Well, and I was freaking out because I couldn't see anything. Well, I could hear someone breathing really heavily over me. Was that you? It's probably Torbeck. <clears throat> oh. Oh, all this hot debate has made me so hot. Oh, I need to cool down with a popsicle. Do you mind? And I'll like, <laughs> all straight, scooch out my chair. Uh, do you mind if I go check for popsicles of sea cucumber rubber rectangle trousers? 
What are you trying to ask me? He, he would like to uh, uh, just, go uh, in the kitchen. To just see. go into, go into oh, the kitchen. You should not leave this room just, until you, we are finished. Just, uh, just to, oh, I need a popsicle though. Ah. You will wait for popsicle. Okay. Okay. I have done what you asked. Okay. I brought Twig back. You did, I see that. Yeah, yeah. You said as we knew her, and she's currently made of wood. Well, from a certain point of view. She didn't say from a certain point of view, man. <laughs> no, I don't think she just said she'd bring her back as we knew her. And personality wise, she's exactly the same. Oh. That's I mean that's she's got a fair point. The spark that is twig resides inside this little wooden girl. And the soul's the most important part, isn't it, kid? Right, fellas? I'm glaring at Crummy. Oh, great job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so now, we must talk about what will happen next. Do you know how you will get into theater? Do you have plans? Uh, we have a few ideas. Knock um, on the front door, probably. I don't know. The prismere uh, does not quite work that way. You will have to have a guide to get you into theater, and not many know the way. There was a creature once. It was a little scarecrow. I cannot remember its name. But it wandered here from theater. If you could find the little scarecrow, no. ah. maybe they could take you. We will seek out this scarecrow. We will keep an eye out for that. That was going to be your suggestion of, of how you would get us there was find the scarecrow, child. Yes. Oh, one right. one more thing, Bavlona of delicious tropical punch cookies that are great. Right. Yes. May I ask something? We're going to do such a great, grand quest for you. Could you throw in one more thing? Most likely not, as we are the show, and I've already done my my part. But you may ask, little the, green one. The name of the goblin currently known as Jingle Jangle. Yes. And like not having a bewitching obsession with keys, she's just had a rough go of it. You know what I mean? And you know, I feel like she's had enough. You know what I mean? You got that long around. I don't know what you are asking. You are telling me things I already know. I just mean like, could you asking a favor? Could you like just you know give it back, give it back a name, give it back her old life? The old life where she was horribly afraid of being locked behind the doors. Well, but she lived in fear every single day of her life. Uh, this is she was miserable and sad, and she came to Lorna for help. You want me to undo what has been done? You want me to bring back the fear? You know, this is one of those from a certain point of view situations, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I was just, I was just, I was checking. I was just, I was just checking. That's all. I just thought of it. Oh boy, gosh, we can all go for a popsicle right now, <laughs> eh? <laughs> oh, it's a little hot in here. We yeah. could all cool off. Well, well I can cool off for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Take up any more of your time. Uh, we can certainly find a hot tea, cold popsicles. Do you believe that you have everything you need to succeed? You know how to thwart my sister, what her weaknesses are. Then, by all means, please. Oh no, no! I mean, if you have that information, please. Yeah, take any, any, any information at all that you're willing to share to defeat your terrible sister, that would be. <laughs> That would be fantastic. You seem like you're in a rush to get popsicles. I would not want to hold you behind. I mean, I, I could just go and get popsicles for everybody. I mean, I don't mind making a popsicle run. <laughs> whenever everyone's, whenever anyone's like, hey, we need a popsicle, I was like, oh, that's me, Grico. They call me the popsicle guy. So I could just, I all, could just all, jet. All the time we say that. Yeah, yeah right, Frosty? Yeah. I'm, I'm. Mr. Popsicle. He really I, is always talking about popsicles. Yeah, most I mean, of the time. They're just very nice on a refreshing. I will give you one more thing before you leave, because I do wish for you to succeed. I would not have made this deal had I not. Torbeck, have another cookie, and she passes you another cookie. Okay. 
Good boy. Crumbs also go flying very much like when Twig ate the cookie. Give it the nightshade. Is the hag of the past? She She deals with those who are haunted by it, haunted by regret. Skibitha is a good liar, much better than the rest. She does not wear her heart on her sleeve, like Lorna does. She is part toy, and lodged in her back is a key. The motion of the key will tell you her true feelings. That is all I can give you. The rest you will have to discover on your own. But notice the key in her back, for it will let you know if she means what she says she means. For I have no doubt to get to the portrait, you will have to talk to her. And under no circumstances will you let her know that I sent you. Do you understand? Torbeck have another cookie. Okay! <laughs> you saw him clear which sister is this? This is Skeb with the night. Skeb with the night. Sorry, that's fine. Play that every day. All right, I mean, anything else? I mean, you know, things we should know if about Villa, like a loom merge, or the tree, or anything else? If you would like to stay the night, I have a guest room. You are welcome to sleep. No, no, we, we, we got I something there. Yes, we, we've, uh, we've already paid for the night where no. we're going to stay. I will <laughs> be spending <laughs> most of the night in my bed, but you are welcome to oh. use my home. And even if you find yourselves looking for a night of rest, come join me. It will be lovely. Oh, no, we had a big tropical punch cookie earlier <laughs> so we're, we're, we're just mm, you know you just invited the five of us to your bed to my my guest bedroom oh yes my bed. okay i just it sounds okay i i misread that i'm sorry that's not frosty I, I, that's what the a, fuck was that your <laughs> <laughs> you wishful thinking <laughs> oh. thinking wishful uh, i just have one question you said we gotta get over there, we gotta get the portrait, we're definitely gonna have to talk to her. She's not gonna let us just take it off the wall and walk out of there. What if we have to deal with her? What if we have to... I would take the time to think about what you could offer someone like Skebitha. Or she will be like me, and she will want a deal, but you don't want to lose in this deal. I gave you a good deal because you had already shown your loyalty and your honor. Well, you cannot do that uh, for Skebitha. For you belong to me now. You are my loyal friends, not Skebitha's. Uh, uh, well, I'm a simple part of you. Uh, Dormag means if- Have another cookie. Okay. Um, um, me. Um, we can just get close to the portrait. Um, 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 um. Mr. Krammy has said in several different contexts that Torbeck has sticky fingers. That that that, that is that is true. Mm-hmm. We'll get the portrait, no problem. I don't have any concerns about that. But, uh, you know, while we're here, before we leave, I just want to put in a good word for the chef. I mean, Bloody Toes is doing a great job. She makes a mean stew. <laughs> She's amazing. She's really the best. She, you know, if, if you, you know, have a budget for There is a reason I have kept her around and have not gotten rid of the little thing. She, she deserves a raise, I mean, if you, if you got She it. does not get paid. She has really nice freckles. I have not seen well, well, maybe you should look sometime. You should also let her go. We need her help. No, I need a chef. You have had enough. We know the best, second best chef in Downfall. His name is Pierre. <laughs> and he <laughs> would love to trade places with Bloody Toes. <laughs> I oh, yeah. talked to him. I recall. I talked to him after the show. Oh, and no. And after he survived. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Five stars. Five stars. After he survived his bean accident, uh, <laughs> this dude's uh, life has just gone from bad to worse. I picture Beth Lorna sitting down next to a hospital bed, and he turns like two face from. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Persuasion. Yeah. I can't believe you're doing this to this guy, Mike. Nineteen. <laughs> About this little bully one, you say. Uh, he, he was the one that was <laughs> harmed in the competition? Yes, and that's the only reason why he lost. He's a it master was, chef. I he did he, hear that, he yeah. cooked for the king himself. It doesn't get much better. Why well, have old bloody toes with her nice freckles and everything else? You don't, you don't need, you can have, she's cutting the vultures. He will, he'll, uh, he'll feed you the finest, uh, uh, Beezleberries. Beezleberries. And and the, the, the most Beazel succulent, uh, b- 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 what did nice people, rich people? Frog, frog leg. Frog leg. Uh, frog leg. Frog leg. <laughs> frog leg. Caviar. Oh, caviar. And, Eggs. Oh, yeah, yeah. And a souffle. And the, um, the coral fish. Breakfast. And much coral fish stew as you could possibly eat. So, I will have a word with the king. And you can and just. I can make a trade, bloody toes for Pierre. I will do so, for you are right. I am the Lorna Blightstraw, and I deserve the best chef. And the best. Life. And Pierre, let me tell you, he's good. <laughs> he's real good. He'll make a very small portion of something, and then he'll put a really thin, long chive right on the top, just balanced perfectly. You'll love it. <laughs> that sounds delicious. Uh, we saw him try to serve foam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm speaking in Torbeck's mind as we're all trying to keep the mood light and doing whatever we're doing. Torbeck, if you're offered another cookie, no, I'm whispering in your mind. (laughs) Don't react. I've done this to you before. All right. If you're offered another cookie, don't take it. <laughs> Do not take the next cookie. You've had seven. Torbeck, have another cookie. Okay. No, don't do it. Uh, no. Don't do it. Uh, you don't You're full. It? You're full. You can't. Uh, you this one possibly. has extra frosting on it for you, Torbeck. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to cool it off with a nice popsicle. <laughs> Torbeck's uh, going now, well, uh, Torbeck's gonna be honest. Uh, uh, I feel like we all need to cool off with a popsicle. Uh, well, uh, it's about time we hit the old dusty trail. Thanks for having us, Babylona, and uh, we'll get you that portrait lickety quick. Now, if you want to get me a second portrait, we could talk about another deal. Oh, all right. Well, we're gonna be in the area. I mean, what about stuff that? Tabitha has had Scabitha. my portrait for too long. I would like to have hers as well. You said that you lost days. If I give you three days back, will you get me the portrait? I think. Could you throw in uh, the color of my eyes and the kid's ability to dance and Frost's uh, <laughs> and a hundred thousand gold pieces? Everything <laughs> else. No, everything. No, no. <laughs> pretty, pretty good point. We just leave. I didn't. I didn't trade for anything. Everything else that was stolen by those terrible minions of Scabify, please. Yeah, we were scammed too. We were scammed. Every end. I and cannot do that. You have made a deal with them. Give us Torbex years back. I could make mul- You don't have years? No, I it's think to no, tell years, years. It's here. Torbex, it's hard Gideon to said years, time. It's so hard to tell between all the method fur. Man, Torbex has said a lot. <laughs> I can make one deal per portrait, and I only want one. Do you want your days back? Or do you want your dance? You can choose. Not the dance, easy. I don't care about the days. Well, we'll no, well, 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 hold on. Why don't we well, get everything that we lost? Fuck, they scammed us. She said she's not doing. She said she's doing one thing. For clarification, didn't Frost give up 
something with fear. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Definitely that's right. Did. That's right. Just so you're not yes, missing out on potentially getting something back. Not to stir the pot over here. Don't mind me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was something emotional, so he doesn't care. It's I thought not it was a something not a with fear or something, but I could be wrong. Mm. Oh, mine, Torbeck. Mine, Torbeck. Yeah, it was, uh, uh, it was abstract. An ounce of fear. Thank you, Chad. And it was something you were really afraid of. And you weren't afraid of it anymore. Uh, what if we say everything that was scammed by Bobble, Charm, and Trinket? I remember the names. Vile minions of Scamifer. And we'll get you the other portrait. I feel like it's a nice package. You know? And you do not want your days back. And you do not want his years back. Well, I mean... What is him getting his years back? What does that look like? Mm. A long and painful process. Yeah. Probably fine, right? Yeah, Dorbeck like is out. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a no from Big Dorbeck. <laughs> Bodacious D is yeah. saying no. Oh, come on, Big Brown. <laughs> yeah, Big Brown, come on. Dorbeck's pretty happy where Dorbeck is right now. <sighs> Torbeck's not ready to reopen those wounds. Well, it's your call, I guess. I just thought you'd want to crack the mystery of what's going on with you. But if we say, oh, he gets his years back and then he gets slooped away at a horrible, you know, horrible laboratory <gasps> experimented on him, then that's no good. I don't think we need to entertain any more deals. As, as kind as your offer is, Bav Lorna, and as important as those things that we've traded away are, Fair. We don't want to find out uh, that we are similar to our lovely twig here in a half measure sort of way, and it becomes a twisted monkey's paw and a whole nightmare. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're Frosty. saying you're not smart enough to make a deal without any strings attached. It's pretty funny. <laughs> 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 I think we've all had a lot happen today. We're all a little hot during this heat wave. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we all just cool down with a nice popsicle? Is all I'm gonna say. It is time for Mommy Lorna to make her way to her bath. My cracking skin is in desperate need <clears throat> of lubrication. Oh. Yeah. So I will take my leave of my new friends, and I will see you again with portrait in tow. That's perfect. Well, should we? I mean, I'm happy to exchange the three days for the portrait. I think that's totally fair. What do you think? The second portrait you will do? Absolutely. Then we have a deal. Wow, well, hang on, man. Look at she twins. reaches her. She reaches her hand out to shake your hand. Isn't a frosty? What, what if it's like three days from your childhood? Man? You're, you're just a three deal days. fiend. You're, you're, you're gonna be filled with regret if you make this deal. Making deals is fun. I'm right? not. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> you got, you're a little addicted hey, to making you, deals, man. Just I one, just one more. We did okay with twigs. So you just oh, I'll push the chips across the table. I'm not in. I don't agree. Whoa. Big words for sourpuss form over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you, you all have stopped He's listening right. to me. So he's right. Do whatever you like. Frosty is right. I'm not interested. He is kind of a sourpuss, but he's right on this. But he's a, right. he's a, he is a sourpuss for good reason this time, finally. All right. I am willing to be overruled on this one. <laughs> Don't y'all forget it. Oh, Torbeck is so happy it didn't come down to a tiebreaker. <laughs> Torbeck was really worried for a second there. You, you can Ooh. remember this, but it's not like you're doing us a favor not making this deal. We all are in the, this together. I'm saying if we run out of time, I'm going to say, I told you so. <clears throat> Please go moisture ice. <laughs> <laughs> With that, I will take my lead. Good. It was a pleasure having you all over for tea. Wow. Especially wow. you, Charm. <laughs> 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 
And she she begins to once again um, that jerky movement that seems to almost whip through time and space. You watch as she makes her way um, towards the spiral staircase um, that, or towards a spiral staircase that leads somewhere down beneath her. Oh boy, I can't wait to get a popsicle. I sprint to the kitchen. Uh, as I see uh, Greco sprint away, uh, I look real quick to see if there are any cookies left. Uh, there are four cookies left. Oh, <laughs> one for the road coming, Greco! And then Turbeck will follow after. And you all make your way towards the kitchens? Come on, Twigsy, let's go get a popsicle. Okay, um... Hey, get in. Yeah? Can I ride on your back? Yeah, come on okay. up here. She sits on your she sits on your back. Um, what are these? Oh, uh, what are you talking about? How come they made of wood? Oh, well, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. You died, we dealt with a hag, and now you're made of wood, and that's kind of the whole thing. I thought it was maybe I have an old or not mayor. Was in a real awful space filled with gold and a bunch of stuff and crummy dirt old hat. Well, well, I mean, you know. Yeah, you were in a room. Like a man. You were filled <laughs> with, uh, you know, it's filled with you gold. Died. I think uh, some kind of cube. Grammy's, Grammy's hat. Yeah. yeah. Might have been like if it was on the ground, maybe. It was, yeah, so know. here's the thing. Um, I just. I kind of want everyone to look at me. And she waits until the rest of you leave the room. It's just the two of you in there and maybe Kremi. Yeah, I, I just, up. here's the thing. I just kind of want everyone to look at me and go, good job, Twig. You did something really cool. And we we really appreciate it. And I really felt that way until I couldn't breathe. And then I thought, okay, we'll I'll just get out. And then I thought, oops. And that was kind of the last thing I thought about outside of, and Gideon, don't tell anyone else this, okay? Twigs, I'm not gonna tell anybody else, but you've been doing really cool stuff this whole time. Thanks. Remember when we almost all died on the bridge and then you shot everybody in the crotch and killed like four people and for whatever reason, you yeah. got them cleaning that right at the, right at the Jimmy yeah, John's, you know? That's when you guys told me that was a war criminal. That was so fucking cool. That's delivery. Yeah, you were, yeah. Yeah, you were a war criminal. Bitch. You're a goddamn war pig, you know what I mean? You just blah, blah, blah. I mean, we throw punches. Uh, <laughs> the rabbit was hooping. He was, he was zipping and diving and dodging. I couldn't touch him. You were just in the back. Everybody was dead. She starts like waving her arms around and yeah. keep getting hit in the side of the head with uh, the, uh, uh. with the handles of her uh, handles of puppeteering. Yeah, um, remember that other time you uh, licked that frog? Oh yeah, I remember lots of times like frogs. I don't have a tongue anymore, so we'll figure that out. Guess I can't do that no more. Anyway, the last thing I thought of, and you can't tell anyone this, was I love you guys. And that, you know, at least for a while, it just felt really nice to be part of something, you know? Something bigger than a twig. Twigsy. But guess what? What? No, I'm not even twig no more. Well, you're kind of even more twig like I know. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm lumber. <laughs> now my name's Lumber Toad Spring. No, it's not. Yeah. It's still twig. Well, so, yeah, I think that's fair. I, was, I wasn't going to say it, but when you said it initially, I was like, I thought it sounded that. really cool in my head, then I said it out loud and thought, no. Nope. Doesn't quite roll off the tongue. No, it doesn't. No, it's not like, like Twigsy's got a certain, like, Yeah, thing you can't call it. me Lumsy. That feels weird. <laughs> nah, it feels definitely weird. You know, it has certain yeah. connotations. <laughs> not sure what they are, but it well. just feels like it has certain connotations. <laughs> Lumsy. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad we moved past that. You know? yeah. It was well, never really on the table. <laughs> I don't know how all of this happened, but thanks for putting me back into, um, I don't know, the world, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's no big deal. It's what you do for family. You know, I would have done it for Crammy, I would have done it for Frosty, I would have done it for Little Green. I would have done it for, you know, Big Junior. I would have done it for... Are we I'm missing probably, somebody? What do you mean? I don't know. I mean, I would have done it for, like, Jingle Jangle. Or yeah. That's what you're thinking. Maybe it was what I was thinking. Oh, what about the king? No, the king's kind of a little weird. Oh, maybe Snapple Juice. Oh, no, 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 no. He's pretty cute. Oh, Crocodile Snoop. Yeah, Snoop 
Snappletooth. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, like, I would have made certain deals for a Snappletooth. I mean, definitely not Morgo. I mean, she was depressing. No, it sounds like you caught everybody. Yeah, I think we really checked the box. Oh, I know exactly yeah, yeah, who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe I forgot. Hootsie. <laughs> I would have never Hootsie in a heartbeat. Are you kidding me right now? I can't now? believe you almost forgot Hootsie. I'm almost going back up there making better deals you, just for Hootsie to have a cute outfit. How could you forget a big hairy thing like Hootsie? You know, she's been eating popsicles kind of this whole time. There's been a lot of stuff going on. She's so big. She's so hairy. She smells weird. How could you ever forget? I mean, she smells kind of great. I mean, you know, I don't even think she smells weird. Yeah. So that was kind of weird. I can't memory. smell anymore. Because yeah. I'm made of wood. Yeah. Well, you can't smell anymore? Nope. Ain't smelling nothing. Well, that's going to help out here because it smells like shit. <laughs> Torbeck! <laughs> Damn it, Torbeck! Somebody, that's who I was missing. Torbeck's like, no, oh, no, Torbeck senses a, a you know normality. I also <laughs> not only can I not smell, I also can't take a sh. And then you walk into the kitchen. And as you make your way into the kitchen, it is loud in here. You see that Hootsie is absolutely annihilating an entire bowl of food scraps. She's got rats and vulture parts and um, carl fish bodies. Um, you can see that it, there is an array of meat detritus uh, <laughs> she is just uh, that she is just I will just lunge forward and just like just ta- almost like tackle. If you're gonna wait, make your way back into my kitchen and trail oh, your mess about, you better have been bringing me some of them lornlings to destroy. Oh, thank you! I have such good news. Besides Hootsie being okay, did Auntie? Of course she was too? okay. What you think I was gonna do? Make a Albert stew or something? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a complete degenerate. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Oh, this is the best day of my life. Oh, I was really so put your line about worried, that. Hootsie. I thought you were gonna be turned into uh, some sort of horrible, like uh, half-stitched miniature war game. Oh. Uh, do I remember that Gideon still has a pot on his back that's filled with two lornlings and a dead lornling? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do. Uh, did Auntie uh, Bernie Toes take good care of you, Hootsie? Gosh, you. You're, you're I was sitting up. like this at the tea table. Now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's outrageous. And, and bloody <laughs> toes. Rules. You're just like, don't equip it. This is in your inventory. Miss Toes, I have such great news for you too. Thank you so much for taking care of Hootsie and finding. Oh, you're welcome. These sea cucumber robot rectangle trousers popsicles. Not quite sure what you're talking and, about. But. And 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 we're gonna get you. We got you a new job. You're out of here. What do you mean, I'm out of here? You're out of here. You're going to go work don't, in the don't castle. Don't play games with Mars. No, 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 no. I promise. I promise. You're going to get out of here. You're going to live in a castle. It's going to be great. Uh, uh, some shitty guy named Pierre is going to take your place. Yeah. And he's going to he's going to be the one who's changed. I'm not under the heel of that haggle. No. Have a No. And we were of those little frog fucks together. No, those little fucks. Oh, and Gideon's bringing you little frog fucks. I mean, one of them's already dead. Yes. When you got to the smash about the lornlings. <laughs> yeah. My you favorite think? thing to do before I got here was to kill bullywugs. <laughs> I'm finally going to get to smash their heads in night after night after night. Oh, we know we no uh, longer be under. You don't need to tell us any of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have a thirst for blood and it sounds like they're safe in it. No, you keep no, that inside. We all she walks yeah. towards you and grabs your hands. I think you and I are kindred spirits. We <laughs> have a deep-seated hatred inside of us and a lust for killing. You are unlike anything I've ever met. Uh, I mean, and if I had a romantic bone in my body, I'd smooch you right now. You oh, no, don't. that's too far. So I won't. I'm kind of busy being a single dad. It's kind of a full-time <laughs> job, and I'm having a, a wild adventure. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to know uh, that the sentiment was there, even if I'm not going to go ahead and Oh, uh, no, I, I appreciate it. I really appreciate you. You're very nice, Freckles, I will admit. But, I mean, we all have... If, Thoughts that we think of that we would never plan on acting out. I talk about most of my thoughts because 99% of them are about killing. Uh, and I, we obviously don't act on those. <laughs> <laughs> if what you're saying is true, if what you're saying is true, this means 
that I'm going to be able to wet my cap every single night for the rest of my life. Uh, from a certain point of view, say psych right now. <laughs> <laughs> say it. Say it. Say it. Uh, well, uh, Gideon, leave the pot. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you're here yet. Uh, oh, hey, everybody. What have we been talking about? Oh, no, no. We were just Pops going. Uncovering dark we were secrets. just going. We were just talking about how the bully wolves are going to be fine. We've we've overthrown their totalitarian, heretical, rhythmical monarchy, and we've established a constitutional republic, and everything is going to be fine. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, isn't I? You know, I I stepped in here thinking that we were going to mess things up. But everything we've put our hands on has gone in this uniformly positive direction. Oh, oh you're nice. right. It's yeah. just another common W for us. Yeah, you know, I was really believing we weren't heroes, you know, and now I'm kind of thinking, like, maybe we are heroes. We're doing a lot of road stuff, guys. Yeah. Yeah. That's us. That's uh, so, uh, Miss Toast, it was very nice seeing you. I'm sure we'll exchange letters at some point. Uh, enjoy your new job. You don't need to tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Uh, I'll make sure to send you letters. Oh, yeah, you could do that if you wanted to. I'm a great pen pal. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know where I'm going to be. Life on the road. Right. Single they're, dad, full time job. There are fake creatures that will be able to find you no matter where you are, what oh. plane of existence you find yourself on. Oh, For the rest of our so lives, sorry. we'll make sure that we're in constant contact. For you've oh. done something. You've done a great thing for me. Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Sounds like she's excited about a new job. I'm just yeah, no, no. Let's take no. a look at the Lornlins to make she... sure that they live up to the deal. And oh, then I'll yeah. tell you what, she, what she needed to be told. There you go. Here's a giant pot for squishing Lornlins. If that's she, what you want, um, I'm going to go eat a popsicle. She <laughs> opens it. You see a big grin stretch across her face as she closes it. Those will be for later in my alone time. Uh, oh, that's cool. We all have hobbies we like to do. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend is dead and hit. <laughs> uh, uh, we're going to take this last Did you not box. want the, po- the oh. my part of the deal? You brought me the Lornlins, and I was going to give you information about the Lorn Bright Light Straw that would help you. Oh, yeah. I mean, sure. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll take, take it. We'll no, take no, it. We'll take it's it. been a crazy <laughs> day. <laughs> All right. Well, I never, I never forgo on my end of a deal, so I'll tell you, Bavorna has one weakness. Oh. She's allergic to seeing anyone run Wittershins. Mm-hmm. That's counterclockwise. Oh. Near oh. her. Such a sight causes her to... Causes the hag to sneeze uncontrollably, uh, and she can't function. Uh, okay, that's all. <laughs> okay, well, uh, well, uh, that is not something you would have been able to find out from yeah, anyone no. who lives here. Let me no. ask you. So what, it's what really piece, lucky for you that you followed through on the end of the deal, or yeah. you never have that information. I know this wasn't part of the deal, but are there any burritos in this hat? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have a hard time finding a burrito in this place. <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> Well, um, thank you for the critical information. We are going to file that away. It is important. We'll circle back to that. Uh, enjoy your job. You were a good friend. <laughs> uh, we'll take these popsicles and the hot to go. And I think it's about time we hit the old <laughs> dusty trail, yeah. Big Red. <laughs> well, this was lovely to meet you. I hope that you have safe travels. Uh, and if we ever see each other again, just know that though I don't have friends, you're the closest thing to it. Thank you. I promise uh, not to kill you nice. on sight. Thank you, Miss Toes. Yeah, thank you, Miss Toes. Do you, thank you, it's Missy been a pleasure. To- Do you have any bird feathers for the road? <laughs> There's an entire basket by the door filled oh, with bird feathers. If thank you, like them. you. Just a touch before we go. Nice move. Right. A little roadie, Miss Torbeck. Uh, Torbeck is ready. Okay. <laughs> How do we get the fuck out of here? I just, I just jump, I fly. I don't is there a basket? There I, a- I went. I went to go out onto the patio, um, or on, onto the the landing with the stairs, and it looks like they've completely blown away. Your only <laughs> chance is going to be taking the yeah the stairwell downstairs, the bathing room, and out the front door. Well, the bathing room is occupied, and I'd prefer not to see that again. So, uh, why don't we all take wing and fly? Oh. Should we use one of our 
monarch charm uses? We only have three. Three? Each. Mm. Right? Yeah. Each. I mean, this yeah. seems like a waste to walk out the front door. Well, what if we, uh, what, wasn't his name, what, isn't there like a giant cable that runs to the ground that oh. crashed on, you know? I think we could zip, zip on down there. Yeah, maybe I'll like swing the chains over them. Everyone, ah. everyone hangs on them. We just kind of like zip towards the ground. I could lily pad. So to, yeah. to get to one of those, you're going to need to take the stairwell downstairs and go through the bathing room and head out to the front lawn where you'll be able to take one of the, the wires down back down to Downfall. Uh, we can just go real quick. How bad could it be? Yeah. Nobody look. I swear to you, it is <laughs> unlike anything you've ever seen. We'll, we'll go quick. We'll, go, we'll shield our eyes yeah. and we'll move quickly. Can you just lily pat us down one at a time? That's probably for the best. I don't think that you want to see what I've seen. Well, just, well <laughs> no, I'm, I meant just to the second, to the next floor. I think we just walk down the fucking stairs. Oh, fair enough. Up. Yeah, let's it's walk like out. Said, oh, don't follow me. Don't peek. I, I just kind of. I oh. felt like I was picking on a vibe. Was I totally way <laughs> off on that? <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I thought oh, it was too <laughs> Like, invitation by omission. Yeah. <sighs> Didn't she literally just say, like, oh, there's a bedroom, and uh, maybe, yeah. maybe I was she just even know how to close horrified by sitting next to <laughs> that charm creature? Frosty, I mean, I, I would normally. I mean, normally I would question you because you would try to fuck a swan boat. <laughs> yes, I feel like I'm very good at picking up on clues. <laughs> But this time you might be right. <laughs> yeah. Well, Miss Itos, it's been a pleasure. I'll call you wherever we may be. Uh, farewell. You can go ahead and get out of my kitchen now. I've got okay. cooking to do. Okay. Goodbye. We got the heart. We got the skull. Okay. Goodbye. <clears throat> can you go down the stairs? You make your way down your I'm down the this. stairs, and you enter out into the room. You can hear the sounds of splashing as Bavlorna and the Lornlings, uh, very many Lornlings, splash about in the pool. None of them, well, none of them seem to notice you, or if they do, they don't seem to care. As Bavlorna bathes, I would say... For the for the sake of it, um, one of you does get a little curious and looks. Bevlorna is dressed in a bathing gown and is not uh, is she is not nude, but you can see that her skin is no longer cracked, but has the subtle um, wet sheen of a frog, and she looks happier and younger as she bathes in this water. Mickey had picked Torbeck. I was gonna ask if I could roll to regurgitate every cookie that I ate, all the feathers, everything. But hey, Gideon offered, so we're good. No, 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 no. Gideon offered, we're good. We're good. I just wanted to let you know what would have happened. You know what they say? Uh, any lily pad in the swamp. <laughs> 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 And you are able to make your way outside without fucking the hag. Yeah, I mean, once you clean. Luckily, we don't have a bar. Yes, that is fortunate. That is, I'm covering Hootsie's eyes. Just go. And just you are go. able to make your way outside. The wind is picking up here, but you do see the single clothesline that stretches all the way down to downfall. There is no bucket like there had been when you'd come up. You remember that that had made its way back down to the base uh, after you had vacated its premises. But it is there if you can find some means of taking it. Hey, weird guys! <laughs> you still down there? Try tugging the rope. Uh, there must be a way to call the bucket. Uh, 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 Gideon, why are you making that noise? Uh, so, well, hey, well, no, I just thought maybe, you know, like, I just thought, <laughs> no, no reason, no reason. I just thought, you know, maybe they'd hear it. I, I don't know. Right, it's very trainy. <laughs> Are you um, fucking kidding me? What? It it's actually takes a while, from. but it seems like it works. Yeah, As eventually, out, person, out of the like clouds, oh, yeah. you do Fasting. see a bucket oh, begin to on. move up the wire. Ah, it worked! I nice, knew it! Nice job! Well, you know, sometimes you just gotta give them a little bit of the old tug. <laughs> Duly noted! <laughs> uh, well, here we go, everybody. The bucket's up. We just pile on in. Head down. Wow. Let's go find Clapperclaw. Clapperclaw. Then, that depressing guy. 
Yes, yes. Let's make that as brief as possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do we have to? I forgot about that guy. Well, maybe we can go like in the middle of the night and just like leave his heart on the doorstep and leave so we don't have to see how it works out. <laughs> oh, man. He's got the right idea. I hate that guy. You all say this as you embark upon your journey down from Valvorna's High. You had made your way to this place with the expectation that leaving it, there would be one less hag in the fable. <coughs> and yet, somehow, you are leaving it with mm-hmm. your very best friend in puppet form, having just suffered a horrific death, and a deal with this hag, now aligned with her in some way against her sisters. And how this will fare for you, it's hard to tell. As you all take most of this ride in silence, thinking about the events that have unfolded and what is laid out ahead of you. And you do eventually arrive at the platform, the tower at the base of this uh, of this rope, and there are no bullywugs to be seen. Whoever sent this bucket up toward the house is mm. no longer present, mm. but you're able to disembark and make your way wherever it is that you choose to go with it down. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Lead the way. Well, that really got out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say it. <laughs> that, that escalated quickly. <laughs> Dormek found a grenade. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, <clears throat> hey, what'd you put that heart in, by the way? Oh. I put it in my pocket. <laughs> it's got it's got a hootsie hair. <laughs> I don't feel like that's uh, that's gonna work. You didn't leave it in the box. Yeah, didn't last time I turn you into a Greco seal. Yeah. Do you want me to have pick turn you deliver things to people? <laughs> Hell yeah! Can Big G take the heart? Yeah, we'll go wrap it up in a box or some shit. Oh, that, that would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think for the sake of brevity, we might as well just do it that way. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I think that's great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Pink, what does Pink Junior look like now? Well, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen her since I woke up. I'm going to need like 10 minutes. Oh, okay. We could take 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, all the time do I even world. do it? Do I even have abilities anymore? What if I'm just a wooden twig? Oh. Oh no. Oh. Oh. oh my Are there gosh. any? Is there any wildlife around? Yeah. Squirrels. Why don't you try swamp hunts. squirrels? Yeah. Why don't you try blowing up that squirrel over there? Please? I would never. Uh, you can pick any target and try to blow it up. It doesn't need to be a live thing. Oh. Perhaps that. Or oh, that possum over there. What do you think? I like possums. I, wait a minute. Who's that in that boat playing the fiddle? Is that Jeremy? You can shoot Jeremy. Oh, you want me to shoot that cicada over there? Yeah. He's way too big and, and photorealistic for a fantasy adventure. I don't like bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. yeah take him out. Yeah, take the shot, Twigsy. Sink him, Twigsy. Sink him. The natural 20. Oh, Jeremy. With the natural 20. Twig begins to channel her magic, and at first you see nothing, but eventually you do see the swirling um, green magics that Twig has always channeled. The the swampy, um, murky magics that she twirls beneath her hands as she shoots out this blast of eldritch magic. Um, or um, in her case, fey magic. And you watch as the splinters of the boat fly up into the air and Jeremy says, Finally alone. (laughs) (laughs) Where I can play my music best. As I went down to the fucking bitch. Go! (laughs) Got him! (laughs) Whoa! Oh, baby! Oh, Twig, you can see it. Too. Uh, yeah, that's where I aim from. Oh, God. How is it better than the squirrel? Oh. 
Oh, oh he's not with his shins anymore. Yeah, go. No, he should have went now. Uh, I saw it right before it hit. He had those brown pants on. <laughs> you like unzipped his carapace. <laughs> you see a, 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 a fiddle floating in, the, floating in the water. Oh, it's fiddle. Oh, there it is. Uh, uh, Oh, uh, gosh. Oh, Mrs. Jeremy's going to be so upset. Uh, no one I don't would think marry that fuck. <laughs> yeah, there's no Mrs. Jeremy. Yeah, he gives just, me the guy that's got a date in 30 years. He was just married to his music and his swear words. He didn't have any personality at all. He's a mean old bastard. Oh. Oh. Well, I feel like we've come full circle. Yes. yes. Yeah, I feel like we've really gotten... Okay, by yeah. the way, here's, here's Big Junior. Look, she's a stuffed pig now. Oh. As opposed to a real pig. She's yeah, stuffed. Yeah, she's stuffed. a stuffed pig. Yeah. Don't cut her open because her stuffing's going to fall out, and then I have to summon her again. Hmm. Uh, Big Junior, are you able to deliver these things to the people that we don't want to RP me- going out in a meeting? So, wait, so you want me? Oh, yeah, speaking of not having to RP with people you don't want to have to RP with, yeah. I could deliver that skull to Clapper Claw because guess what? Oh. I know how to get to Thither because of my inn. Yeah, what? What? That would be yeah. so <laughs> narratively convenient. That seems real clean. That's much cleaner. That's, that's, really, that's really clean. That's really clean. I could have taken you there the day that we met if you just asked me nicely. Uh, did did we? we not? Uh, yeah. Big Twig, it was like the first words out of our mouth. Like, hey, we're trying to get to thither. I think I might have been dis- distracted by the fact that Torbeck came over and destroyed my inn. Uh-huh. So maybe the lines of communication were broken. Yeah. To be fair, I, I hold equal blame as Torbeck for destroying your inn while That's transformed true. into a zug zug yeah. That's true. Zug-zug. You were a zug zug I zug I zugged, and I zugged. Yeah, you destroyed that <laughs> tea cap. Yeah. yeah. You're going at it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Lock yeah. Tara God. Uh, I'm not sure that we don't want to talk to Clamper Claw. I feel like I had many questions about Gehenna, especially, and I feel like there's yeah, a whole no, war I mean, dump that we missed. Uh, Clapper Claw is like the one NPC I, I did want to talk to. I have a feeling we'll see Clapper Claw again in the future. Clapper Claw sitting with dangling feet out off of a off of a dock, and Samuel Jackson walks in. <laughs> It's, it's hyper realistic, Samuel Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it was green screen. Oh. All right, well, uh, that, that, this all seems like a very tidy, to be completely honest. Yeah, it makes it really narratively convenient for the god of the world. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's already been 42 sessions, if you can <laughs> count it in that, and yeah, we're only in the first I read world. a story once where someone did this with their group in five sessions. Whoa. Is that true? That's, That's impossible. impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I owe you a help book. Yeah. Uh, 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 well, uh, okay, Petunia, here's a giant stag skull, and here's a beating heart that's very cold. You got that? You got that? Looks like she's got it, so we just have to send her on her way. Well, is there anything else we need to do? No, today just went really well. I mean, everything just kind of came up Torbeck. <laughs> There's no way this could ever go wrong or end on a cliffhanger. I agree. Uh, perhaps uh, could we send Pigtonia after she uh, delivers uh, the gifts to grab the small crocodile that's owned by the king? Uh, or is that is that right out? I mean, I feel like that. We'd have to RP, and then that wouldn't be narrative. Mm. Oh, yeah. anymore. Snail number two! You've been waiting this whole time! <laughs> oh, yeah. Snoodle on your back? <laughs> Snail number two. Okay, we're gonna go on an adventure, but you're too big, so I'm gonna grab this saddle. <laughs> it's like uh, Mario uh, getting damaged. He turns real small, and I'll just pick him up. Okay, you can sit on me shoulder. <laughs> Ready. Is that happening? No. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, very quickly, should we should we go and kill Pierre so that Bloody Toes doesn't become a What the hell? Why would you kill Pierre? Pierre? Because, because uh, then, then there will be no one to replace Bloody Toes, and she won't go on a killing spree, probably ending most of Downfall. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, why would she do that? Because she's a murderer. You didn't hear her before you came back, but 
Bloody Toes is is a fan of killing bullywugs. It's all she's gonna do when she comes out. <laughs> oh man, what are the chances? Uh, <laughs> this is a very interesting place for her to be. Oh, yeah. I'll do it if we can do it in a Wes Anderson style, Fantastic Mr. Fox comical high scene mm. where we put on silly masks and we sneak in and we brutally kill chickens, okay. right? But instead of chickens, it'll be Pierre. <laughs> and then we'll have a wacky comical escape. And can, be fine. can we have a quick Pierre killing montage? <laughs> <laughs> is that really what you guys would like to do? Well, Torbeck's not so sure. Torbeck ate a lot of cookies. Uh, and <laughs> I'm standing there, like, huffing. There's, like, uh, there's colorful ice cream stains running down. I don't gumballs. I follow. I also ate this old bag of popsicles. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I'm up for a heist. <laughs> the color palette starts to get really warm. Oh. All of a sudden, we, and we're in a perfectly straight line and we're symmetrical. Yeah. <laughs> and you pull out the scheme. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, we don't do that. We don't. We Instead, we... You send the gifts, the... You send the gifts <laughs> out <laughs> to... Um, to Coral Hearts, Ray, mm. and to Clapper Claw. And mm-hmm. you know that you don't need to wait for Pigtunia, that Pigtunia will find you. But you do have a choice to make. Do you stay another night in downfall, or do you begin your journey to thither now? We're going to waste a lot of time. A lot of nights. Well, no, we only have limited days left to do what we need to do for the King of Hearts. We made a deal, and we've been making a lot of those, and I'd like to keep all of our promises. Also, can I just say... It feels like we're we're really like we're doing well. I feel good about what just happened. But does anyone else have the feeling at all mm-hmm. that we just keep kicking the can down the road? Where well, we got into this mess for making a bad deal with Mr. Guru. And so to help us with our deal with Mr. Guru, we make the deal with the King of Hearts. And then that gets all fucked up. And then to help us with our deal with the King of Heart, we make the deal with Bovlorna. I feel like we're in like a Don't multi-level the deal marketing you made with scheme. Ah, oh, the deal with Magic Grossloff, <laughs> deal with Mr. Guru, and then to help with the deal with Magic Grossloff, it's the King of Hearts, and then to help with the King, the deal with King of Hearts, it's Bovlorna. When does it end? I, feel I like tried to end it with Bev Lorna. We were talking about removing, uh, uh, ending all of our various uh, yeah. uh, uh, deals with the uh, Darklings. <laughs> it's like, we could have gotten 100,000 gold and just been on our merry fucking way. They don't deal in gold pieces, Heath Frost. That's not their style. I don't know, Bev Lorna uh, probably has it's like, the ability to conjure gold. And, I don't know. It's like we're in a multi-level marketing scheme. It's like when Neil caught, hit me up and wanted to hang out and talk about chocolate bars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hadn't seen him, and I'm like, oh, it'll be nice to get up with Neil. And I was like, oh, that's a great business opportunity. Don't you want to hustle and get rich? You can get a car. Any second deal we did it's with awful. Bav- Lorna would have ended in more <clears throat> twistery. Right, it also sounds like we'll have to avoid a deal with uh, Scabbeth uh, before we uh, steal the paintings back. Maybe that one we can kill. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I really need it. I need some kind of outlet. I we can kill her. The crazy fuck. We'll yeah. kill her first, and then we'll shenanigan the rest of the dungeon. How yeah, that I sense? really think that that's going to work. I, I, have I a, appreciate that approach. I have a feeling yeah. that the portrait of Bad Lorna is going to be extremely hot. <laughs> yeah. She she loves all things ugly. She loves she thinks of herself that way. It's probably like a reverse Dorian Gray scenario, don't you agree? And you know, I don't know what that is, but <laughs> like she hates it because it's basically a pin up picture. Exactly. Oh. Right. Uh. And you know, Gideon, I agree that you do need an outlet. So before we go, why don't we just swing by an establishment? We can go to Wendy's. Wendy's Wendy's? Yeah, we can what do you mean? Go ahead and do what at Wendy's? Duh! I was just Why checking. Why saying it like that? Again? What do you mean? What am I saying? He said Wendy's. I was just... No, he's saying Wendy's. Wendy's. Go by Wendy's. I thought Wendy's. maybe just Wendy's. In, in case charm dying, maybe. Anyway, never mind. Let's go. Let's go to the Let's go. I agree. So Where can I go there now? I was excited about Wendy's. Right, if you have the ability to. Transport us there via your inn. The, uh, yeah, I mean, the it's going to take some time because the inn's got to walk, but yeah, we can go. 
Wait, is the inn unchanged since your tragic death? I don't know. Can I have my bag back, Gideon? Oh, oh. yeah. Here you go. Take and, that stuff. Are we ready? Do you have anything else in mind? Yeah. No. Morgo's fine. The king's fine. I ain't got nothing up there no more. <laughs> uh, that goop guy's fine. And whatever happens with Bloody Toast is out of our heads and it's nobody's fault. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? No, I'll get it. Let's, let's go. go. Yeah. <laughs> smash, smash cut to, uh, to a surgery room. Yeah. We couldn't save Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> with that, um, Twig opens up the, um, the acorn satchel and you watch as in front of you begins to unfurl the inn at the end of the road. The long roots that stretch out beneath it that propel it forward like uh, like legs of its own um, prop it up above the murk of the swamp. And the door swings open invitingly. You're immediately met with the smells of the inn. Twigs in that same autumnal, cozy scent that you are so familiar with. And the warm glow of the hearth is already burning as Twig ushers you all into her home and you you spill into it. Um, you make yourselves cozy for the trip and you watch out the windows occasionally as downfall rushes past you as the inn at the end of the road propels itself forward much faster than you expected it to is when it came up to you initially it was moving slowly through the muck but it is moving uh, with a haste you didn't expect it to have and all the while you enjoy tea and more cookies and stew as Twig in her puppet form in her marionette form bounces about her kitchen as if nothing at all was amiss and you all relax for the first time in a while (sighs) until eventually the signs of the swamp begin to fade away. It is no longer the swamp that you see outside of the windows, but dark, looming trees. Thin at first, one large tree here mixed in between the mangrove trees, still um, embedded a little bit in swamp, yet somehow thriving then eventually more and more as they get thicker and thicker and thicker until you find yourself looking out at what appears to be a dense, deep, dark forest. You hear the sounds of birds and other forest life, completely different from the swamp. can hear the sound of the wind rushing through the leaves of the trees and the crunch of branches and twigs beneath the uh, beneath the movement of the inn. One of the windows opens a little. And you can feel not the wet, hot, almost oppressive air of the swamp, but a nice, crisp air as it blasts in through the open window and chills your skin for just a moment, but the heat from the fireplace helps to keep it at bay. And eventually, the inn comes to a stop. Well, looks like we're here. The inn's not going to travel much further into thither. It's more acclimated right now with the legs, as you see, to swamp terrain, so... We're going to have to go on foot for a while. Going to need at least 24 hours for the inn to acclimate to thither. Mm. Or we could use it in this way again for trouble. But we're at least here, right on the edge, well right on the border. You see those two trees there? Those two really big trees with the faces carved on either side of them? One, one is the... Wild man, I guess. They have a name for many names. And the other one is, well, the forest maiden. They have names for her too. The way they stare at each other across this path, that's that's the demarcation line. We have to walk between their gazing eyes to get into thither. Oh, it's kind of pleasant here. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Look at all of the moss. It's Jumpy, kind of. You can bounce on it, almost like a trambolene. 
lot better than the swamp. Great work, Dwayze. Thanks. I didn't make it up, Sparky here. What was the name of the maiden you mentioned? Oh, the I just know her as a forest maiden. She's got many names, but the people of Wither <clears throat> will be able to help you with that more than I can. Hmm. Forest maiden in the wild. The forest maiden wild. in the wild. She's man. symbolized by a moon a lot of he times, amazing. and he's symbolized by the sun. Oh, oh, oh sun hmm. and what? Moon. Moon. Oh, oh. kind of like that doll you got, Torbo. Oh. Oh, oh, I wonder if that doll was inspired by them. Could be. Oh. Is you see a resemblance from Mr. Mooney? Um, I would take a look at the uh, the the faces on the trees and see if it you know sparks any recollection to the marionette in my. Set. I would say there are definitely similarities. It doesn't look like, however, these trees were created, whether they were carved or not. It doesn't look like it was the same artist. But you imagine there was probably inspiration drawn. Done. Ooh. Uh, Dormag is getting a heavy sense of impressionism with the art piece in his sack. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh. what? That's what I call mine, too. Dormag said what Dormag said. <laughs> That's a very, very cultured of you, Tobik. With that, Twig ushers you all out and closes the door. <laughs> Goodbye, Ian. See you later. Goodbye. And with a snap of her finger. The inn turns into a satchel that she puts over so her shoulder. Long, twig. Well, <laughs> I guess the only way to go is forward. Yeah. Through those trees. Through those trees. Through those trees. Ah, we forgot to reunite Willow with all the other ghost kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I knew there was something bugging me on that dream. Well, you gotta go back at some point. Nah, just tell Pigtoonie to do it. Rats. Well, how, how, are we, how are we gonna do that in the first place? I'm pretty sure we made some sort of promise. Well, I'm sure we'll, we'll still go back to well, it. Wouldn't we have to kill Bavlona to do that? Well, from a certain point of view, there's yeah. always time, Gideon! <laughs> hey. There's always Listen, time! We'll the calendar, man! I mean, we'll, we'll clean up one, we'll probably deal here, we'll go to the third, no deals left, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, this What's is like a, those, man? you know, it's like a Donkey Kong 64 adventure where there's a lot of backtracking, <laughs> so, you it's know. Like on the way back, it's all downhill, we yeah. take them all down at once. Yeah. Oh, efficient. Okay, but are we ready? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. Poochie, you ready? Okay. Okay, you guys follow me then. Just one foot in front of the other until we get past those two trees. And Twig okay. begins to walk. There is a mist accumulating at your feet. And it has been for a while. Um, as you get to the point of intersection between hither and thither. And you make your way past these trees. And as you do, the mists part to reveal a primeval forest. Fragrant breeze wafts between the enormous trees, sending motes of pollen dancing into the air. Patches of sunlight kiss the forest floor, and the sweet melody of birdsong echoes all around you. As you all begin to change. Your bodies begin to shrink and twist. You watch as Twig looks at you in concern and horror as all of you are now staring eye to eye with this marionette girl Gideon you look towards Kremi and where Kremi had stood there is now a mushroom man a man made of fungus a toadstool cap Kremi you look towards Torbeck and where there had been fur there is now just fungal flesh and I'll say for the sake of ease, you would all know what these creatures are. A Kempestri. A mushroom kid. All of you have become one. And that is where we were in the session. Oh, oh, shit. We're mushroom people. And you're level four. Oh, oh five. You're level five. Yeah. Oh, we did it! Holy we smokes. did it! For the next session, a new stack Holy block shit. to account for the fact that you are all campestry. Campestri. No way, campestry. Mm -hmm. Campestry. 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 So like Campari. Uh, Amy. 
Campestrian soda. Wow. I didn't Only roll a single 160 die. hours of game <laughs> in order Thank to Thank you. Become, you ate uh, a lot of cookies, five. though. I did. Easy money. <laughs> Easy money. I'm going to level up right now. If you don't start next wait. session by saying we all look like a bunch of fun guys. Greco <laughs> 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 hasn't spoken yet. Did it. <laughs> well, if you want to tune in for that episode, it's not next Wednesday. Oh, it's when Monday. is it? It's on Monday, Monday, July thirty first. You don't have to Monday. wait a whole week. Monday, July thirty first, because we're traveling for Gen oh, Con. Yeah. So our Wednesday session is canceled. We're going to be traveling, and we are playing Once Upon a Witchlight right here on Twitch, seven thirty p.m. Eastern Time, July thirty first, which is Monday evening. It's going to be a blast. Let me pull up a picture of Cam Pastry. Oh, actually, I think there's a Cam Pastry in the back. You don't want to miss it. You definitely don't want to. We miss turn it. into Smurfs. No, you don't. No, I don't I'm want to get chased by Gargamel. He it's wears the weird. This is a Cam Oh, wow. Oh, that's oh, us right now? Yes. Holy oh, shit. Terrible. Oh, yeah. oh, my God, we're toads. We turn into toads. Oh, yeah. God, we have to give them the best. Oh, yeah. Nice Fantasia. It's pretty good. What else? Well, we're going to be Gen Con. I mean, that's a big announcement. Monday. Monday's the big one. Monday's the big one. Stay tuned. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't fucking miss it. Huge announcement. Monday, Monday, Monday. Uh, and we'll play some Witchlight, and we'll be mushroom people. And then, and and then, then we're at Gen Con, hang out, and, and then, then after that... Neon Knights is canceled. Yep. We're not doing Neon Knights on Monday, uh, because we're going to be tired. We're going to have weary bones. But then we'll be back for Wednesday again. Yeah. So, that's and it. The, when, the Friday after that will be... Icebound ice ice on the 11th. Bounding. And, and then, then 19th is uh, Stardust Rhapsody. That's not the Saturday after that, is it? Yes. Yeah. What's... Seven days later would be the 18th, Con? which is a Friday. Then Icebound, and the Saturday after that is... Yeah, yeah, Saturday. we're not we're not doing Friday, Icebound, uh, and Saturday on the, in the same uh, week. Uh, you'll, you'll have a week. Uh, 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 I'm done, We're not done. Chill. What's uh, next? I am my... A bathroom it's break. Chill. Uh, yeah, I you got it. You got it. Uh, yeah. Our first session without a break. Yeah. I, know, I, think, yeah. I think ever. That was pedal yeah. to the metal. Well, we used to never break. But when did, when did we never break? Uh, Prime, Prime. We called the Feywild. We really? Never, we never took breaks. No. Uh, we were breaks, really stupid. Breaks didn't become a thing until Stradania. Yeah. Well, huh. or, or obviously, um, beneath our wings. Beneath our wings. wings. We had a lot of breaks. Well, but, yeah, that was a long. Well, that's because long. we would that's have like a two-hour mukbang in the middle yeah. of the. Oh yeah. yeah. We literally play for four hours straight. Uh, we've aged and chill. Uh, if you're new uh, to the, yeah, I guess if you're if you're from YouTube and you haven't watched live and you're not a patron, haven't done the ed- ed- edited episodes, uh, we hang out after each session. We talk about our favorite moments, talk about theories, talk about uh, whatever. We answer questions from patrons. A new thing where we answer questions from patrons. So if you want to ask questions, all you got to do is become a patron of the Golden Monkey tier and higher. Uh, and I think other than that, we if we're not going to see you at the ha- the oh my gosh. We have the hangout and then the then which light, and then that's it. Then we're at Gen Con. It's nuts. It's um, right around the corner. Yeah. yeah. It's just a, it's a, a week from today. We'll, we'll head up there. A week right? from today, we will be in Indianapolis. We will be in Indianapolis. A week from today. Holy shit. Jeez. Basically, a week from start time, 7.30, we'll be saddled oh. and on the doing stuff. So anyway, with that, don't go anywhere. We love you guys. Let's-